Hello and welcome to Season 10, Episode 2 of the Cartridge Club's Game of the Month podcast, where we'll bring together members of the Cartridge Club community to discuss our community playthrough. If you're new to the club or interested in participating in future months for games like Ratchet and Clank, Hades, and Donkey Kong Country 3, join our community Discord, our forums at cartridgeclub.org, or follow us on Twitter at cartridgeclubna. We love to see the hashtag Cartridge Club whenever you're talking about one of the games we've selected. I'm Church, and on behalf of our rotating pool of hosts, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. On behalf of the entire Cartridge Club community, I'd like to give a huge shout-out to our Patreon Club backers. Ross Rengo, Joel Boyce, Kevin from Buried on Mars, Base Guy, Dean Lasagna from Round 2 Gaming, and Caleb J. Ross, as well as the rest of the Cartridge Club Patreon supporters. Thank you. October's Game of the Month for the Cartridge Club is one of the most requested games to be covered by the club, and fits in perfectly with the spooky season. For this episode, we'll be discussing the critically acclaimed Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 1. Joining me to talk about the game is Captain Algebra. Hello. Chris, the old-ass retro gamer. (laughs) Hey! (laughs) And Jason from Corpse Sled Gaming. Yay, yay! (laughs) <laughs> I'm glad you're all here. So The Walking Dead is a five-part game series set in the same universe as Robert Kirkman's award-winning comic book series. Play as Lee Everett, a convicted criminal who has been given a second chance at life in the world devastated by the undead. With corpses returning to life and survivors stopping at nothing to maintain their own safety, protecting an orphaned girl named Clementine may offer him redemption in a world gone to hell. So, disregarding the description I just read, how would you describe Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 1 to somebody who's never heard it? I'd say, hey, have you watched the show? Stop watching the show. Play the game and said it's <laughs> ten times better. Uh, I think it's that's very fair. And it has actual stuff to do with zombies past the first season. So, yeah. I love yeah, it's it. Like, it's like playing an interactive TV show slash movie. You know, you're watching a lot of the cutscenes, but then also getting to make the choices. Yeah, like, did you you've never been show? depressed before? This is definitely the way to go. <laughs> Depression yeah. starter pack. Yeah, yes. basically. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's worth saying because uh, I I'm always concerned anytime I bring up this game to people who aren't familiar with it or haven't played it that there might be some like they might think that they have to know the show or they have to know the comic to enjoy the game and this the game is like very disconnected from all of that there is like a minor connection between the comic show um and the game just very briefly in the first episode mm-hmm. uh i would say it feels more like it's connected character. to the comics than the show familiar character yeah, sure. but, uh, yeah yeah but otherwise it's really it's it's its own thing it's just yeah a universe it's totally beginner mm-hmm. friendly like if you're just wanting to check out what the walking dead's about, this is where I tell you to introduce yourself. Like, uh, yeah, if you can, I, if you can handle the tone of the game, you can handle the comics. Yeah, because I read like the comics right up until the show came out, so I was so stoked about the show. show okay, then the show was boring after I played this, and I couldn't continue watching the show. So <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I just this is the definitive Walking Dead for me. I really enjoyed the comics, but. It's like, hey, have you ever read a story? You know, you kind of put yourself there. Well, this game enables you to do that. You're literally in there. You're making things happen. You're not just watching from the outside. That's what I like about it. Anything with, like, choice. And all your choices have consequences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, so what's... Uh, so, Jason, you told us what your history with the series walking dead is in general uh what are your guys's history have you did you watch the show read the comics um i was thinking about writing a a zombie screenplay back in like 2007 and i wanted to read up on like all the modern 
like tropes for zombie films and whatever. So I watched a whole bunch of like zombie movies from like the past and the present at that point, and somebody turned me on to the comic books. And I bought a whole bunch of the graphic novels, and I got like heavily into it, like real heavy. Now I read, I think, like fifteen of them, and uh, I was really excited for the TV show. And when the TV show came out, I watched like the first season. I was like, yeah, that was okay. And then I heard about all the behind the scenes crap going on with uh, uh, the producer, the guy, the showrunner, and I was like, I'm not watching this crap anymore. But the game itself, I didn't really have any interest in uh, because of the way I didn't like the show. But the first time I've actually played it is for this, so. Ooh. This is the first, this is the excuse I needed to play it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. For me, I yeah, I heard the the show was good, so I started watching it. Maybe like a couple seasons in. I mean, I started from the beginning, but and I watched it probably up until like Negan showed up, and then it just kind of started going really downhill. So then that made me get into the comics because I knew they were different, and I read a bunch of those and I loved it. But then it kind of just dropped off completely. I bought the game from like a garage sale a few years ago. I played the first episode and wanted to continue and I just dropped it for some reason. So this was a great excuse for me to actually sit down and play through the whole season. Awesome. Um, did you, uh, did, did everybody play the definitive version of the game yeah. or? That's what I, I played, played the 360 version. Okay. Jason, did you play yeah, the I played, definitive? I played definitive. Uh, I should also mention this is my first time playing. Uh, oh, was it? I think, I think me and you, Church, it was it wasn't our first time, and uh, Chris and Cap, it was your first time, right? Yeah, it was my first time. Yeah, so, my first time. Yeah, I played. Yeah. I I played a uh, seasons one and two, four hundred days uh, when they like day one, basically when they released, um, and then for some reason I I waited. And missed season three, and then season four was out, and then there was uh, Telltale, the news that Telltale was getting shut down, and they weren't going to finish season four. So I was like, "Crap, am I to blame for this? Not me personally, but just you know, not buying the game." We were so like I one coffee short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I so I ran out and got season three and uh, four, and then played through those. I didn't uh, I didn't play season four until Skybound ended up getting the i don't know how i don't know the backstory but they ended up getting the rights and finished season four so once season four was done then then i played that um i did read the comics uh i can't remember if i read the comic before or after the show it might have been right around the same time i might have read the comic like oh the show is coming out i want to read the comics um i don't remember how far i got i got a good ways in like i want to say like 60 or 80 issues or something Mm. I read about uh, the first the hundred. Well, the thing is, that I never collected them. I just, yeah. uh, I, I, I download them because like it was hard to find, uh, you know, a bunch of issues in a row. And uh, when I collect stuff, I always want to start from the beginning. But you know, it's hard to find first issues, especially when it comes to comics. So I was like, eh, yeah, I'll just download it all. So it was yeah. at a time where I was like buying a house when I started really getting into it. So I was like, yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll just read it online. Yeah. Buy, buy like an omnibus or something at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did watch the show for a few seasons. I think I want to say it was either season four or season five, like the first episode, something really dumb to happen. And I was just like, no, I'm done. I quit. And I had struggled watching the show. Like there was, uh, when the show was in its prime, there was this really funny meme that was going around. That was like a, like a, a, a bar that was like cutting the slivers. And it was like uh super interesting setup for the show. Nothing happens. Zombies. Something happens. Yeah. Gets you excited for the next show. And that was like every episode, but um, yeah, no, it, the game, the game's where it's at. Yeah. I got, you know, I was stoked for the show cause I was such a big fan of the comics when it came out, I, I think I really enjoyed the first season and maybe maybe the second one too, but it really started having less to do with zombies and more to do with people drama. And that coupled with everybody talking about it nonstop and not being able to contain themselves on Facebook immediately as they, like while the episode's still on with the spoilers, not caring, thinking that everybody on earth is watching it at the same time. Oh, you like, mean you weren't live tweeting it as you were watching it? Yeah, it's like, I don't, 
don't, I don't really care anyway. If it's ruined, I'm like, I'm not feeling it at this point. Anyway, by the time everyone bandwagoned on it, I was just like, uh, you're just making it easier to not like this. <laughs> so yeah, I just kind of there was uh, a person I worked with that would talk about it nonstop to the point where like, I think she talked about it for an hour and a half straight one day. And my boss had just been sitting there all quiet, listening to her talk. And eventually he just like interrupted her. He goes, hey, 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 just so you know, zombies aren't real. <laughs> <laughs> and that ended the conversation forever. <laughs> I was actually liking the show for a while, uh, probably because my wife was actually interested in it. And she's not interested in that kind of stuff. But then once they started doing more like people on people violence, she like mm. bowed out. She's like, I can't watch this. And like. Then it wasn't as fun to watch it, you know, when it was just myself. So I was like, yeah, it's not that good anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah once, really I, once gets, Frank Darabont got kicked off for after the first season, I was like, fuck this show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Captain, you played it on 360. Yeah. Chris and Jason, what did you play it on? I, I played, played it on the Xbox, Xbox One. I played it 360 originally, though, so I can oh, okay. vote both up to the second season i think i played the full second season and 400 days too on 360 but maybe i didn't finish second season okay but, and, uh which system you played on chris uh xbox one cool uh i originally played it on pc this time i since i got the definitive version i'm like should probably open this game and play it so i played the definitive on ps5 um just to make cap right and can't leave it sealed man <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think we all kind of well, Captain, you probably didn't experience this as much, but me, Chris, and Jason all experienced a variety of bugs and glitches with the definitive version. Uh, when I had originally played the game, I never had any issues whatsoever. Um, didn't really have that much for issues this time around, but uh, there was some like uh, at the main startup screen for season one when you load up season one. Uh, there's just like uh, black, like texture, kind of like it wasn't pixels per se, but it just like splotches, like cutting in and out. It was almost like uh, when you take a sponge and dip it in paint when you're like in preschool and, you, and you're dabbing it. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Like a bunch of those. And then it would like, I found it only started doing that when I was on like episode four and five <clears throat> when I'd started up hmm. too. So that was kind of odd. Yeah. I don't think I noticed it. Until like yeah, I think it was like two episode two or three, and it started. And then Chris, you ran into a pretty, basically game breaking glitch in. Yep, four hundred days. Yeah, the, I got kind of like soft locked because if you don't react to a specific thing in time, the game saves right when you get killed. And every time it says, do you want to continue? You continue and you just get killed immediately and that you can't get out of it. And because of that glitch, it causes like a cascade thing. So if you decide to start over with a brand new game, it makes it so you can't save at all and it'll corrupt your previous saves. Crazy. And it just, it's, it's like, I was like, yeah, I just deleted the whole thing and then uninstalled it. I was, if I want to play it again, I have to start over from the very beginning. Yeah, I didn't have any of those problems on 360. Well, yeah. too. <laughs> a little choppy, at solid. Times, but <laughs> you got those yeah. Jason uh, uh, frame rates over there. <laughs> yeah, it like seemed like whenever I started up an episode, it was just kind of choppy at first, but then it was smooth the rest of the way. Sure, sure. Uh, so, Jason, I think you're you might be the main one that could chime in on this. So, with the definitive version, they kind of added a filter to the game, and they made that the default setting. Um, mm -hmm. where the previous versions of the game looked pretty normal. Uh, with the definitive version, they added a filter called graphic black, which basically added like a very heavy, like black shadow to everything to kind of give it more of a comic book look. Um, yeah, it definitely looked more cell shaded and like it, it did originally on, on like the last gen or I guess two gen to go consoles. Uh, but it was more pronounced in this. I definitely yeah. felt that it was more. It was one of those things where you like play the original version and then remaster, like you know, where you, one of those ones where you can flick back and forth, and you're playing the new version. You're like, this is how good it always looked. They didn't even fix anything. Yeah. And then you switch the thing and to look back, and you're like, oh, it's drastically better. But this is just what it looked like to me back then. So it kind of, I it took me a bit to. I had to like look back 
on the video because I was like, I don't remember it looking exactly like this. It was like not as dark before, and it seemed more yeah. cartoony. And actually, I honestly, I think I preferred the the original version, but I played through the whole game with the graphic black. Like I was reading discussions just because I was curious, to, like what the internet was thought about. And a lot of people seemed like they really enjoyed getting more of a comic aesthetic, but there's a lot of details that get lost like, because the, the sh- like everything was dirty. Yeah. <laughs> where it was actually like pretty clear for the most part in the original version. Yeah. Um, it, it there's actually more a, dilapidated definitely in this yeah. version. And there's a couple places where like the, what, whatever they must've just used an algorithm or something to do this. Uh, I know there was one scene where there was like, they're looking at a clock. I think it was a clock or something and you couldn't even see it because it was just this big black smear of, you know, shading where there's supposed to be something there. I was like, that's yeah, kind of weird. Um, I I remember that, but it was, I could tell what it was. They were looking at it. But yeah. 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 All right. Um, so I don't really have a preference between the original and, and this one. Like it didn't affect it that much more stuff. Definitely looked a bit grimier and I kind of appreciated that after, you know, it's the apocalypse. Not like who's cutting the grass here. Who's, uh, who's been cleaning the walls while everything's been rotting. Yeah. <laughs> so it was appreciated. All right. Well, uh, I mean, so kind of talking about graphics, like visual aesthetics, like, Chris, Captain, what do you guys thoughts on how the game looks? I like it. Trying, yeah. Like you said, I, I thought it I it fits the comic book aesthetic, you know, which is what they're going for, and I thought it worked worked for the game. Yeah, it looked like the comic book in color, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But I did I did think that like there was a couple of times where I think it was in the first episode when they were in the uh, the drugstore. I'm sitting there going like, Wow, everyone got dirty real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering what that was and now you're talking about this extra filter they added. I'm like, okay, now that makes sense why it looks like that. Yeah. And I'm not, not really going to bring it up. Yeah. I'm not really sure why they did that. Uh, I'm sure there's the info is out there, but I never bothered to look it up in the zombie apocalypse. Everyone sweats bean juice. That's why. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, okay. So how about like the gameplay itself? Um, there, there seems, for many years with this game, there is like, I think it's a small percentage of people who will just like trash on the game because they think it's just a walking sim that all you do is you just click one button to play through the game. Cause you're not running around, jumping, shooting, doing all this crazy stuff. Um, obviously they're wrong, but what do you guys think of the gameplay? How, how, how this game operates? What, what, how does it play? Well, whenever I recommend this game to someone, I always have to preface it by, this isn't Left 4 Dead. This isn't Resident Evil. It's very heavily a story thing. There's some action scenes. It's basically like a quick time reaction. And I I really like this game and games like it, like all the Telltale games. I have them all. But it's all I really have to be in the mood for or else I like... I'm really not feeling it. Luckily, I was feeling playing this game again because uh, replaying some parts were a real chore because you're like, I kind of just want to skip through them talking because I, I know what they're going to say. You know, even though it's been like, I don't know, 10 years almost since it came out. But I'm just kind of like, all right, I know I, I know I can't do this until I talk to this person. I have to pretend like I need to figure it out. Because that's the only time I'm like, I wish I could skip through this. Like the heartfelt moments, the uh, big exposition points and stuff like that, I totally get not being able to skip. But if you've already talked to someone and you just need to see if they need something else from you and they repeat it and you got to sit there and wait like a minute and a half while they go through the the whole thing again, that thing kind of grates on me. And I wish I could, like, at least the second time, let me skip through it. But, uh, yeah, besides that, I, I really like the gameplay. But it's something you got to be in a mood for, and it's something you got to be expecting. Because if you come in expecting high action, that, that's when people will be disappointed. Like, this isn't Call of Duty Zombies. It's heavily a story. It's a storybook where you make choices. 
It's choose mm-hmm. your own adventure, basically. Yeah, I'd agree with all that. Uh, the gameplay is pretty basic. You know, I mean, you're mostly picking what you're going to say, doing some quick time events almost, um, and then sometimes walking around, searching for things, talking to people. Um, and I'm someone who's always, for me, gameplay always is the most important part of a game. Um, story is second usually, but this is a game where the story is so good, it definitely makes up for the basic gameplay. Um, and like Jason said, there were times where I thought, I wish I could go a little bit faster through it. Um, especially there was something that happened in, in episode four. I can't remember what it was, but I made the comment when I was recording the video. I was like, I wish they could have just like, let me make my choice and like kind of skip through this part. I didn't need to see this part. You know, it just kind of made the episode longer than it had to be, mm. but you definitely have to be in the mood for it. I kind of, I really like like the until dawn games and like the dark picture anthologies. I just played the quarry recently and I felt like those are more of an advanced game of this. Like this is more basic. Um, those I could play anytime. This one I think I have to be in the mood for, though. Yeah, I, I, I think this is more along the lines of I, I don't want to necessarily say a point and click adventure game, kind of like Monkey Island that had a little bit more like inventory and, but it, it's more like that where like our super massive games are more like interactive movies more than anything. Mm-hmm. Chris, what do you think? Oh, um. I think they, by doing the way they or doing it the way they did, they made it a little bit more accessible for people. Like it's kind of like an entry level type of thing. Um, but yeah, I was they they do change it up quite a bit. I mean, yeah, you do some walking, you do some conversation trees and whatnot, and shut up, phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, you do some conversation trees and stuff like that. And then like every once in a while, there would be like a shooting gallery moment, and it would mm-hmm. completely take me by surprise, and I would always screw it up because I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> But well, like, definitely, I, yeah. Sorry, I was just gonna no, say cool. you definitely have to be paying attention at all times. Like, yeah, look on your phone because it'll just throw something at you with no preamble. It's just like, oh, by the way, here, <laughs> you yeah. know. Hope you were ready. Uh, but I didn't really have a problem with the way you play the game because, it, like Tim said, this is all about the story. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. Uh, yeah, it's all about the story and like making you feel like you're part of it and all that. So the little quick time events and the conversation trees and all that didn't really bother me that much this time around. Normally, if it was a game that was just hit a button real quick kind of thing, it'd be like getting old mm. and I tire of it very quickly. But for this, it felt like it was necessary and it worked fine for what the story they were trying to tell was. I, I did, Chris made me think of this. I had two complaints about the gameplay. First, the time on responding to something. Like, I get, like, if a zombie's coming after you, you need to react quickly to that. But I should be able to, like, think about what I want to say back. Because sometimes, like, it seemed like you didn't have much time at all. And it's like, I really want to think about my choice because mm-hmm. it's going to matter. And the other part was the shooter and gallery stuff. For some reason, I don't know if it's like this on the defini- definitive edition, but on the 360, it was super touchy. I feel like I would barely touch the analog stick and the, the crosshair would fly across the screen. Mm. And so I actually failed a couple of them because I missed my shots because I just couldn't control the crosshair. Don't blame Yeah, there's some parts where like the show, the choices for the conversation <laughs> trees were like super short and other times you got like a lot of time. Yeah. And it was usually like when there was an argument between multiple people when I, you get I, like this extra amount of time. I kind of liked the when they did that for the conversations because it really like... It's nice to be able to like really like really think about it, but sometimes like it's like a real argument. Like, sometimes you say yeah, I screwed up. Like, I screwed I up a couple times that. because I didn't react fast oh, yeah. enough, and then something would happen that I didn't wasn't expecting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't answer them, they're like, "Oh, fine then, piece of shit," and then they're like, "Yeah," <laughs> you get mad at you. You're like, "Well, I just was thinking about." Well, what I thought saying. I thought I'd screwed up something major because I was talking to uh, Church about something before we started recording that happened because I didn't react fast enough, and I was like, "Did I? I just did that. I caused that." Turns out, probably not. <laughs> There's, yeah. yeah, sometimes they like the game is there. I mean, one great, really great thing about this game and the whole series really is like there are some pretty significant changes with choices. Um, characters like you can have completely different characters sometimes uh events they'll they'll i mean they'll bring up things that happened in the past especially once you get to the farther games where it's really surprising you're like how they bring some of this together um 
So the, I can't the, believe the, when you had two chocolate bars, you didn't give me one. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, dude, that was. I gave him all the Clementine. <laughs> I was like, screw that other kid over there. I'm such an asshole. Oh, poor Doc. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there there are some times where they they yeah they kind of like make you think like we'll, we'll get to that part that Chris is talking about. They they make you think that like you caused this, but it was going to happen that way either way. But it, it but well, they I do felt, it so well. I felt guilty for having that happen <laughs> because of my poor reaction time. <laughs> well, and that's what's I think that's the really the great thing about just experiencing this experiencing this at the moment and not knowing like the meta or like mm-hmm. the alternate choices or how things play out. Um I, I in games like this a lot of times I am very especially coming from the PC realm where it's a lot easier to like quit the game or save there's a thing called save scumming where basically like you make a save point and you can't do, really do that in this save, as well. Save, yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't uh, Detroit become human this at all. <laughs> but but like, but you can like I, I'm pretty sure when I played it on PC, like I originally like there's some times where I'd like pause the game and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna look this up because I just want everybody <laughs> to survive or something. This time when I played through, I'm like, I'm just gonna go with it. I couldn't remember how all the things played out. So I was just like, I'm gonna wing it, see what happens, and some things went differently for me, and that was cool. But um yeah, they you make a choice and they hold you to it because you can't load previous saves. You can't, you know, once it's saved, it's saved. To my detriment when it came yeah. to that glitch. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. yeah cool. So let's early on with, with other games is like you'd never have just one save. You got to multiple yeah. saves in case you screw something up and instead of having to start the game over, you can only you go back. Oh, this, this is from two hours ago. It still hurts, but better than starting over 20 right. hours ago. Sorry. Yeah, it it would be um I don't know, I I think a, I'm I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that want like oh, I want to I'm in episode 2. I don't like how this goes. I can't reload a save, so I'll just start episode 2 over. You can't yeah. do that. Like you have to like start the whole game over or just deal with it and yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah. Um. They the same thing with like super massive games. Like, they hold you to your choices, whether it was intentional or not. And yeah. I, I got to say well, though, I do... the, not sorry. Go ahead. Tim. No, no, there's one thing. So on the 360 version, I had the when I picked my episode, I had a chance to rewind old ones, but I oh. never did that. So I I wonder if you could fix things if you wanted to. I didn't because I wanted it to just happen with how, with the choices I made. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I must have forgot about that. I'm sure that was in the PC version too, but the definitive version, mm-hmm. they got yeah, rid of that. I didn't see that at all in the definitive one. Yeah. Mm. I should have explored it a little bit, like at least now that I beat the game, mm-hmm. um, just to see what happens. Interesting. Jason, you had a thought? Uh, I was going to say that that's one thing where being able to skip through the dialogue would make it like, oh, this is more replayable. I can just get to the part where I want to switch mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. and I just have to. Because that's the point where I'd be like, this is boring as hell when I got to do it again and I just want to <laughs> change a thing. So that's where it would really bug. It didn't bug me so much this time, but there was yeah. a couple of points where like it, it would have been nice to skip through. But if I was trying to replay and just kind of do alternate choices, I think it would really grate on me that I couldn't skip through stuff. Sure, sure. All right, well, let's uh, jump into a story discussion. We'll just kind of go episode by episode and kind of just talk about what happened. We're in full spoiler mode. Like this is a game you can't, I mean, you can't really talk about much if you can't talk about the story and the choices. So just pre-warning for anybody listening, we're full spoilers from here on out. Um, so if you don't want to get spoiled, you should definitely play the game and it's totally worth it. Spoiler free. So, Sometimes it make me happy. Sometimes it make me sad. Yeah, mostly there you go. good. <laughs> mostly sad. Mostly sad. <laughs> all right, so uh, episode one, uh, and these are all the official descriptions for the episode. 
Uh, so we meet Lee for the first time, who's on his way to prison for the murder of a state senator who had slept with his wife. On his way, Lee has his first encounter with Walker, and the story truly begins. Here we meet Clementine and even have run-ins with some beloved characters in the comics. So don't really give you much to go off of. So, episode one. What happens in episode one? Let's just kind of go through it. <laughs> well, you get into that car accident. Car accident? What car accident? You didn't get into a car oh. accident? <laughs> we all got into the car accident. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're actually so game starts off. It's uh, I think timeline wise, it it might be a couple days. At, like uh, so the back for the Walking Dead, how the zombie apocalypse. It's not just like bam everywhere at once. It does like slowly build, and they never really talk about that too much. So it's actually like it's already a few days in that like these problems have already started happening. And Lee is being actually transported to prison. I think I, I'm kind of confused on why he's in a cop yeah, car. I think I think I think he was on the way to his sentencing or something. Yeah, I think that's yeah. right. But uh, yeah, the, the cop that's driving you, who was very friendly, by the very way, very friendly. I don't. I think, think he, he did, did mention a couple times. He just kind of like offhand brought up, like, "Well, I heard stories of something going on at this so and so in town or whatever," and then all of a sudden, bam. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, there's actually um, uh, a broadcast on the radio talking yeah. about some stuff, and he just like, ah, I don't want any yeah, shuts I don't it off. That shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, we're having a more interesting conversation in here, aren't we, fella? <laughs> yep. So, car crashes. You know, good way to to get things going. Yeah, it runs over a zombie <laughs> right, right off the bat. A lot of they, I gotta say, throughout this whole series. Man, keep your eyes on the road. Right. It's, like really, really, it's, really, it's really... Zombies, just, uh, trains, PSA for, a, PSA for a, a ten of driving. Yeah. yeah. Distracted driving is not cool, guys. Not even in a zombie. <laughs> no. So, yeah, so he crashes. Um, he has to get himself off cuffs. Zombies. Then we, we end up at... Then we end up at Clementine's house. Yep. Or, well, you don't know it's her house, at house. First, right? You just end up at a house. Yeah, right? you jump you're over trying a to fence. get inside. And was it is it the walkie talkie that lets you know that she's up in the treehouse? Yes. Okay, yeah. You hear a message on the walkie talkie and then you start talking oh, to her. I think it is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. We hear like feedback on the walkie talkie and then he picks it up, I think. Or something like that. Yeah. He listens to the answering machine, learns about the parents. Uh, worrying about the babysitter and all that kind of stuff. And then she she asks, I think it was a Clementine asks him over the walkie-talkie, like, you know, are you alive? Like, asks him if he's a zombie or not kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like a zombie's going to be like, nah, I had more <laughs> paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down, I got candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then after, like, a short little skirmish, I, I, I'm assuming it's the babysitter. Probably. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. The zombie, uh, Clementine, comes in, takes it out, and then uh, I think this is where you can... I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure this is like one of your first kind of choices where she asks about her parents and you can like say, oh, they're... Uh, they're probably dead. They're probably dead, or maybe they're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or don't worry about it. You can, like dodge the question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, keep, yeah. Yeah. I think I always then, try to go with like the more optimistic answer. Yeah. So I tended to, I tended to go when it came to Clementine specifically. I would try to be super optimistic with everything because I didn't want to see her get frightened or whatever. I was. I generally went honest, but not like blunt about it because there's a couple times where there's different degrees, and I usually tried to be pretty honest with her. Yeah. Um, you know, I think every time I talked to her, I got like an honest, you, you were honest with her and yeah. she appreciates that. Yeah. And generally I, I was pretty honest, uh, pretty honest Lee. And you could be, I tried, I tried to be yeah. honest, but also like kind of reassuring without lying. Like, yeah, maybe we could. Yeah. I never uh, lied to her. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I was pretty basically about everything in the game with everyone. Pretty much. I don't think I really 
lied unless it was like, yeah. I, should I don't think I ever told a lie the entire game. I think I was either force. It was either being forceful or I was just being honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like how they, when you made the choice, like it would tell you if it was a lie or not. That was yeah. nice. Yeah. And it would also tell you their immediate reactions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, they like that. They'll remember that. They'll, yeah. And they may, and sometimes like some of these choices are like, they don't really matter, but they still throw that at you. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. A lot of the time, is this going to come into play later <laughs> on? Right. Yeah. You always got to think. You never know. Yeah. Like, especially if you're familiar yeah, with the come back and bite me in the ass later. later. There's some things where you're like it makes a drastic change to the story, but then there's other ones where it's kind of like the illusion of change mm-hmm. or choice mm-hmm. where you're like, oh, I can choose not to fight that guy. No, that's going to fight you anyway. You can just yeah. try not to fight him or like this is going to happen. Like, you know, the the main story events are still going to happen whether you are nice or mean in most situations. So, I mean, yeah. or else it would be like, you know, it would be like there'd be a hell of a lot more to discuss. Be like, oh, you guys didn't go to the city. Like, you're gonna end up to, at the city anyway, right? Yep, yep. Uh, and then this pretty much locks in our our two main characters for throughout the entire first season, Lee and Clementine. Uh, and then there's a variety of characters who come across once they leave the house. They team up and they're like, all right, let's go. You choose whether to go at day or night. Um, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. But they they start kind of setting you up, shoot, making choices. Uh, you meet up with uh, Sean and Doug, who are trying to like get a get a move a vehicle so they can drive out and deal with zombies. And then we wasn't, wasn't it Sean and Andre or Chet or something. Oh yeah, no, yeah, Doug came in later. Sorry, I didn't write down the other guy's name because I missed it. Well, it depends remember. on when you go too, because if it's the daytime, I think it's. Chet and Sean, and if it's uh, at night, you meet Andre and Sean. Oh. All right. But yeah, so so the time, so the time, even the smallest things you meet, they can switch up who you even end up meeting. So it's kind of yeah, right blown. off the bat, they got you with these places. <laughs> oh my God, I got to start right now. Uh, I'd rather go at night now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then, to restart them. <laughs> yeah. then from there we end up at a farm, and uh, the farm is actually that's a, a, a loose connection to, uh, I guess the show and the comic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's we don't really dwell farm. on it too much. Yep. So, if you've watched, and this is where season. they make they really make you do your first major choice, um, securing the fence. You may have to make a choice between. Uh, well, they introduce like a bunch of our other main characters, so we we, we get introduced to Kenny, um, who is a fisherman. His wife, uh, Katja, who's a veterinarian, and his son, uh, Ken Junior, goes by Duck. Because why not? Yeah. Does he, he quack like me. a duck? That was the question. <laughs> was that what it was? That he quacks like a duck because he talks too much? I think that was what they explained. <laughs> it was something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you also meet Herschel's son, Sean. Yep, Sean. And then um, through various events, then you get your first major choice of who you're going to save. Uh, Sean is securing a fence. You got a uh, duck who's messing around on a tractor. Yep. And I, I'm assuming he pushes a gear out of place. Tractor catches Sean. Zombies show up. Who would you guys him? go with? Who are you saving? Duck. Duck. I just Goose? watched. No. You just watched? Um, I think you're slumbo. Not, not, <laughs> no. you just, I'm just curious how this is going to play out. Yeah. I, I, did a, I did a renegade like, did playthrough. Did you play bets? <laughs> yeah, I did a renegade playthrough, and I just did all the worst things I could do. Yeah. Just I actually voyeur, was tempted just to watch it, it, it be the absolute worst the, all the way through the game. But uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I saved Duck, of course. Being a father, yeah. I felt like, yeah, I got to save the kid. Mm-hmm. And apparently that's the majority. Uh, if it, At the end of each episode, they give you like how other people made choices. And, and Duck was uh, yeah. definitely a higher percentage. That was one of the most very unanimous high. ones where it's like you and 99% of people are like, yeah. man, no one likes Sean at all. <laughs> <laughs> 
Kid's got well, his whole it, life to live for. It's such a tough decision because if you're thinking about it realistic, realistically, who's going to be more helpful in Apocalypse, right? It's going to be an adult, right? A mm-hmm. kid's just going to slow you down and stuff. But like Jason mentioned, being a dad, it's like, I can't not save the kid. That's just, it just feels so immoral. Yeah. And yeah. That's where yeah. they get you. I think that's where everyone kind of, their headspace was. It's like, you're going to save the kid and you're going to save the puppy every time. Right. Because that's where the, that's where the sadness could potentially come from. You're like, oh, an adult. He's enjoyed part of his life, at least. <laughs> I wonder, yeah. if, has it, did it, I wonder what would happen if you do pick Doug. Like, does it kill oh. the kid? Sean? Um, or Sean? Yeah, yeah, they can. If you, I'm not they, sure. Either no. either way, Sean dies, actually. I was going to say, nope. is that one of those things where, like, <laughs> even if you pick Sean, he if dies? He, yeah, he dies, and then and then they could both die if you tried to save him. So, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> See, I I wonder because Duck plays a very he has a pretty significant role throughout the story. Mm-hmm. And I always thought, like, I wonder what a, a I I just have a chart here that kind of shows the the choice chart it's called. But uh, but yeah, my... I, I actually I actually almost saved him this time to just do a completely different playthrough. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because I. Was like, I th- nah. What I would guess would be that you probably make the attempt to save Sean, but he still gets killed, and then uh, you just piss off Kenny. Yeah, it would be. Uh, yeah, you lose his favor, and he already doesn't like you right off the bat. Rather than being like, "Thanks for saving my boy," and then yeah, uh, it's Kenny. It's, Kenny it's, starts it, out great. It's yeah. kind of it's kind of in line with another point in the game that we'll be talking about later, but uh, where it's like kind of inevitable. But, yeah. Yeah. So good. Good for anyone who didn't choose Sean, because it turned out well either way. Because <laughs> they don't want to be known as those douches who killed a kid in a video right. game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then from from the farm, we end up leaving the farm. Uh, we go to, I think it's Ma- is it Mason? Ma- Macon. 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 Thank you. Macon bacon. Macon, which making that bacon. A lot of things happen. We spend a good amount of time there. Uh, meet uh, we, more more characters. That's where we meet uh, Lily, Larry, Doug, Carly, and Glenn. They're holed up mm-hmm. at a, a drug store. There's another connection, mm-hmm. which is a, a heavy connection for Lee because it's actually a store that his parents owned. Right, but and he doesn't want anyone to know that. Work there, right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> past, past tense for yeah. sure. That might come was, into play later. Well, I don't know if he worked there, but he was employed there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then Glenn. Glenn is connected to the comic and the TV show. He's yeah. a larger character, which is it's kind of a neat connection because he he's only here for a little bit, and then he ends yeah. up leaving pretty quickly. And then the my assumption is when he leaves, that's when he goes back to atlanta, atlanta yeah. yeah that's and... where he said he's going when he leaves so and that's where he later on he's also to... connected with a, a bat so that's cool um wow <laughs> <laughs> wow you went there a lot yeah. of references here yeah, yeah. <laughs> spoilers <laughs> um yeah uh, what else um, um well you can choose to let everyone know your connection to the store, the people that were, you know, that yeah. own the place mm-hmm. instead of just being like, they were friends of mine or whatever. Like he says, I knew them. Cause what did like, you guys you can do? Tell, you can tell Clementine. I told her Clementine. I didn't tell, I told Clementine that I was, uh, basically like, yeah, I, was, I killed a guy right off the bat and I didn't want to tell anyone. Uh, the reporter. Yeah, I think lady, he says he. I think he says is. he. You, you hurt. Like I hurt somebody. Yeah, that's. I think yeah, what I picked yeah. was. I was. I, 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 I didn't lie about it, but I was he vague. Says it nicely. Yeah, I was vague about it. Yep, I was vague about it. Yeah, I described. Being I described honest, but you know, not being blunt mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, my way of thinking was like I just met her. I don't want to scare her away by saying like, "Oh, by the way, I killed somebody." Right. <laughs> I I gave her a step by step description. It was gruesome. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Glenn goes off to like 
I, I think he was trying to find supplies and uh, you end up making a little detour. You leave the, the drug store with Carl or you can make a choice actually. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take Carly with you or Doug. Mm-hmm. Or was it Kenny? Somebody. I took Carly cause she had a gun. I took that's, that's what I did. I took Carly. Um, and then we meet, go to the hotel or motel, which we end up later. Zombies happen. Whatever, a bunch of stuff. Um, you find that you find that zombie lady, that lady that's trapped in the apartment. Yeah, she mm-hmm. was bit right. Yep. Yeah, yep. And you give yeah. you can give her the gun. You can, mm-hmm. you can give her the gun or, or deny it. Yeah, I gave her the gun. I, I gave her the gun. gun. Denied. No. <laughs> <laughs> she takes the gun anyways. Yeah. That was her doing, not me. I didn't enable that. I was a bad enabler brother that day. But and, and <laughs> what's I think what's interesting about that choice is it kind of like really leans into future instances where it's like, how do you want to approach these situations? Do you want to be merciful? Do you want to be... Um, uh, forward about it, dealing with it. Like, there's various instances where where bites come up throughout mm-hmm. the game, and I think it kind of or hopeless yeah, situation on your own terms, kind of thing. Or yeah. yeah, it's a hopeless situation that you can be either merciful, but get yourself in trouble, or uh, don't care and you know maybe they'll distract or you can make a getaway. Yeah. Uh, so then we go back to the the drug store. Drug store gets attacked by zombies, of course. Uh, and then we have to make another pretty significant decision whether to save Carly or Doug. Yeah. Who did you guys go with? Carly. Carly. Doug. Why'd you go with Doug? Because you're bros. Because you took the keys off his brother. <laughs> I don't know. She seemed uh, kind of like threatening of uh, going to tell everyone my my secret shit, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't need that on my account. I don't need to worry about that. I'll tell them when I feel like telling them." Fuck out of here! <laughs> I, 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 I think I, I think at that point she was kind of like, "I'm gonna." Well, no, she had didn't really say that she was gonna. I know like, who you are, but I'm not. Yeah, I didn't tell them yet, and you're like, "I don't need you lording that over me. That's some kind of yeah. shady shit." Doug's been pretty cool, so he's good. Doug. Chill. She was a good shot, though. So go, I, like, I know who I you is. Was. I was like, well, in the long run, I'm going to need her. Right. I say, <laughs> her being a good shot was why I made the decision to pick her. You guys yeah. have poor self confidence because I knew I'm a good shot, so I don't need someone else with a good shot. <laughs> not when, not like when Cap says that the controls are all exactly you know, crazy. I was not a good shot. I needed her. Right. Yep. Maybe it was uh, bad, but. Still, <laughs> believe yeah. in yourself. Believe in yourself. <laughs> so then, uh, kind of setting up another one of the big, um, I guess, conflicts of the game is as you are. Well, uh, we didn't really talk about um, the other people too much, um, like Larry and uh, Lily. They become pretty significant characters. Larry, Lily, Dick. Yeah, Larry's the worst. Yeah, he is just your your standard like. Back in my day, like oh, he's the racist. guy from Night of the Living Dead. The yeah, like, totally that with the, guy. With the, with the zombie kid. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's all about him all the time. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a total just, uh... dickhead, not helpful in any way. Even if you yeah. help him, but complains about you. everyone else when they are being helpful. Yeah, but it, and I, it's just a total. The thing dick. kind of like the the thing that kind of threw me off was like, yeah, he's being a jerk, and then he essentially he's having he's having a heart attack so you go through all these steps to get him medicine you get him the medicine and he punches you <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and then he ba- yeah he, he as you're escaping from the drugstore he essentially he, knocks, he, yeah, knocks he cold, cold packs, yeah, yeah and at that i made that decision right then you're like i'm not saving you if i ever get the choice yeah like, yeah choice is made right there see you later. i'm tripping you I'm like i don't care if your daughter's to. right there you're dead to me <laughs> yep. in more ways than one <laughs> yeah yeah. So then you go to the motel and that sets us up for episode two.
So episode two, three months later, the group have barely scrapped by, but have managed to survive. Encountering a few more people that could be companions and coming across a farm, the group might have a shot at just making it through this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and God, this, this <laughs> some some will, some won't. <laughs> yeah, so um, the zombie, mo- the zombie story where everyone makes it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it starts out three months later. We got um, Lee and Mark, and I think Kenny, too, was out in the woods basically hunting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Food's low, so they're trying to find some food. It's not going very well. Shoot Uh, that pheasant! Then uh, we meet... um, Porter, who is a teacher, Ben and Travis. Uh, Porter gets is a another group. He gets caught in a bear trap, mm-hmm. and the bear trap is not your standard bear trap. It does not have a release, which is kind of interesting. Kind of ties so in. It turns into a yeah. saw film, uh, isn't it, David? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a hiding behind a tree. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can hear the zombies in the background going like, "I want to play a game." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so again, we get another interesting choice here. I'm not sure how the alternatives play out. I'm assuming the end result in one way or another is the same, but of course guy gets caught in a bear trap. He's yelling, he's screaming. You're meeting these other guys and they're making a ruckus. So of course zombies show up, got the guy stuck in the bear trap. What do you do? What do you Uh, do? I cut off his leg. Uh, David, I cut off David's leg. I believe I cut off his leg, too. I did not cut off his leg. I kept on trying to open the bear trap with whatever it was I had in my hand. I did that the first time. I did it a second time. And then it was like, what do you want to do? And I go, cut off his leg. And it goes, too late. (laughs) (laughs) He's dead. Zombies got him. Yeah. So if uh, David is brought back to camp after you cut off his leg, Travis dies. And the other way around, if you leave David, Travis comes back to the camp. Yeah. Yep. Um, And one thing I thought was interesting, and they do this in other instances now, where when they say, oh, I'm going to cut off his leg, you don't just click a button and that's that. Like, they make you, they make you work yeah, on it. They make you do it. <laughs> you make do you it. do it. Wow. Do it. I'm glad I didn't get to do that. I get to, well, I get to do it later, but. <laughs> and, and the game's not like in, in like extremely detailed with the, like the gore and the violence, but it's enough. Yeah. And just, just to make like, you oh. wince. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely <laughs> making you wince because it'll cut off a couple limbs throughout this game. Yeah. I was kind of yeah, yeah, yelling at it. More. More. <laughs> M O A R more. Yeah. So then we bring back a couple other people. We got, um, you know, the teacher. He doesn't. He doesn't make it. But we're we we now have Ben or Travis. I guess I ended up with Ben. I ended up with Ben. Yeah, I got Ben. Okay. Got ben. So we all had Ben. Um. Then we. They start, you know, and th- while this is all going on, there's lots of other conversations going on. You're starting to build relationships with the characters, kind of like understanding more about them. Uh, Larry's just a huge, a-, a huge asshole. Not really um, too much. Yeah. yeah. And um, then a couple others. You, so you, you've you've uh, fortified this motel at this point. Um, generally, pretty safe. But uh, you're wary. I think uh, I think they had mentioned that there might have been some other scavengers. Yeah, scavengers or something. Uh, but largely uneventful. And then you get approached by. There's a couple other people who approach. Everybody kind of freaks out. It's Andy St. John and Don- Danny Danny St. John. They're just looking for gas. This kind of sets up our whole uh, our dairy farm. Uh, arc of this chapter. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'll let one of you guys take over. Uh, what goes on? What goes on at this this dairy farm? I, I immediately did not have good feelings. I think yeah. in my recording of it, like I even say right away, I'm like, this this can't be good. Something weird's going on. Because I think you get a chance to like start like exploring the farm a little bit, 
And don't yeah. they tell you not to go in the barn? Yeah. And yep. it's like, okay, that's weird. Um, yeah. Well, if you know horror movie tropes, you know, yeah. like p- two people walk up and they're like, hey, we have food. Come and hang out yeah. with us. I'm sitting there going immediately about cannibals. They're yeah. super nice. Yeah. And, and I'm like, yeah, I've they're, seen they're, Texas yeah, Chainsaw Massacre. Too know right. you know, I've seen Motel Hell. I know what's up. <laughs> Every other person you meet in the entire game is leery of you mm-hmm. at best. When you yeah. come on, these guys are like, hey, we got plenty of food. Come on down, live with us. Yeah, I was like, immediately, I was like, I bet you these guys are cannibals. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I think the strength of the thing. second episode is the 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 drip feed of kind of like this buildup because yeah. everything seems cool. All the you meet um you meet their mom Brenda. And you're gonna help around the farm, and you go out and you start like fixing fences with uh with Mark, and you get attacked by bandits. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark takes a arrow to the should have took an arrow to the knee. To the knee, <laughs> you took it to the shoulder, <laughs> and um, then when you get back to the farm, like the the mom Brenda's like, oh, we'll we'll help you out, darling, and you don't see Mark for quite a while after that. Yeah, poor well, man. you see part of him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He went night night. He went night night. <laughs> yeah, and, and things just keep keep escalating. You, you go out and do uh, some re- reconnaissance for the bandits, and you find some lady who's a bit off, but she's trying to tell you something. And um, Donnie ends up shooting her. So it all kind of just building up to something going on. And as Chris alluded to. Yeah, it turns out, turns out everything's not 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 all hunky dory, right? Because yeah. then you get into the barn, right, and then you eventually figure out how to get into that back room, and there's just like yeah. saws and blood all over and stuff. Yeah, at first I was just kind of like, oh, oh, it's just an abattoir. That they got like cows somewhere. Well, mm-hmm. this room's pretty metal. Yeah, but then I'm no sitting there going, oh well, I bet you ten bucks that's that. I was exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a dairy farm. Why would they have like butcher equipment and stuff? Yeah. 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 Um, then it's dinner time, right? In the in the house. Yeah. And, and then you decide know. you get the choice to explore the house before you eat. Did right. you all manage to stop Clementine from eating? No. Yes. <laughs> Chris, how oh. could you? Well, here's the thing. So the choices they give you of things to say to make the people stop, I picked the one that says it's people. <laughs> it's people. <laughs> And, so I'm, and, and then, like, immediately, uh, he's like, you know, it's people! And everyone stops, and I'm like, of course I picked the Soylent Green choice. <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And next thing you know, she's got it in her mouth. I was like, I fuck oh. up. <laughs> I, I just did the creepy stand in the doorway and have half your face showing and just watching. Yes. <laughs> yeah. no. no, I stopped there. <clears throat> I would have uh, thought of all the, the reactions. that what, Okay, so what was the the choice you make to get her to stop eating it? Like what did oh, you, you just yell, you yell at her? You say yeah. like Clementine, stop! I think the it's Brussels sprouts. Like, yeah, I think <laughs> you yell at her directly yeah. instead of like addressing the whole group. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. I'm glad I didn't say it's people because I almost did. <laughs> yeah. Just because of soil and green, I'm like I almost picked that, but I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. Uh, so things basically escalate from here. They, you know, they capture you all. Um, you get locked up in a, a in a, a a freezer, and uh, Larry has Larry has a heart attack. Oh, it's too bad. Yeah, so sad. <laughs> it's, it's, golly gee, a single tear runs down my cheek. Uh, so uh, he, all the all so the he, heart tear jerker moments <laughs> is the hardest one yeah. for me to watch. But but I, while I, you're grinning, right? <laughs> I think this is where and like you really like yeah. you yeah. start kind of like. Uh, deciding like the kind of person you're going to be like, regardless of like whether or not, whether or not this guy's a racist asshole, am I going to try to save his life? Um, Lily, of course, you know, she loves her dad. She uh, like, she doesn't seem like an awful person. She's put, she, she's gets kind of aggressive at times. Her and Kenny are starting to have a lot of issues, yeah. uh, button heads on who should be leader and whatnot. Uh, of course she wants to try to save him, which she, starts performing CPR essentially. And Kenny starts freaking out. Like, no, we need to just deal with this guy. Yeah, Cause you've seen somebody who has just randomly died, get up and turn into a zombie right. immediately. So that's his and thinking. He's like, he's going to turn into a zombie. Oh. And he just all. 
yeah, we have nowhere to run to, so yeah. we need to take care of him. So, so he makes a choice. Well, there's multiple choices that well, can be made what, here. What choice did everyone make toward helping Larry or not? I was going to help him. Uh, I helped uh, him. Nope. I like you said, church. You know, it, it's like, what kind of person are you going to be? And and I had previously said to Larry, I'm like, you're a racist piece of crap, and one of the choices. Yep. And yep. I was like, I was, you know, I, I didn't want to become him, kind of thing, you know. So I felt bad that I did that. Mm. So I was like, well, this is my redemption moment, is to say, yeah. like, you know, you may be a piece of crap, but you know, we're we we need people, you know. I'm not going to let somebody die, so I'm going to help. And, yeah. yeah. Know, and, and, uh, in, uh, in, in realistic sense, like, if somebody's having a heart attack and succumbs to it, like, you can bring them back through mm-hmm. through CPR. CPR so. okay. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My thought was there was – everyone else had redeemable quality. Larry did not. So like, well, I was, I, I said, was hoping that later on, maybe if I did save him, yeah. he would kind of have a change of heart. Life. I, but then well, again, I should have we known better because we got them. him. We got him the medication, and he still punched mm-hmm. me in the fucking right. face. And so that's why when yeah. I said the comment earlier, I'm like, I if you have a chance to die, you're going to die. That's why I made that decision. Like, I'm still going to be a good person to everybody else I meet. He's going to die, yeah. so I chose to uh, use a cinder block. <laughs> and so, with your choice, did you do the it was the assault lick? Did you do it, or did Kenny assault do it? Lick. That, uh, I can't remember because I in, think it, Kenny did it. Okay, because in yeah. our choice, like you're going to try to help. The next thing his face gets flattened. <laughs> as you're going to help, Kenny just grabs it and just Yeah, you're just you're just looking at his face as you're giving him the CPR. Next thing yeah. you know, you see the salt lick just fall on his head. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think Kenny did it. Yeah. 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 I, my and general I did not expect- my general uh thought process is I'll back Kenny up just about any time. And uh if it comes to her, I wanna not piss her off as much as I can, but also mm-hmm. like if it's between her and Kenny, I'd always go Kenny's choice. But I was like, yeah, I'll ha- I'll half heartedly pretend to care, but I don't. And then oh, he died! Oh my god! Oh, yeah. really oh no! The tragedy! Died. The tragedy! <laughs> so I'm the only <laughs> asshole that just like, yep, let's kill him. <laughs> He's a well, guy. now we know all about Cap. I was, I didn't really. <laughs> I, I, didn't really help. For your I don't think I, I only I did like the CPR, but I think I was like, maybe he could be. I was like, I'm not gonna, but like someone. <laughs> see if he could I don't want him coming back to life maybe. and eating my lips, you know, yeah. kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the, I think the, the, the end result, the choice itself, I think it was like pretty split. If I remember right, mm-hmm. when they when they showed the end results at, at I the think end most of, the of them were kind of like at least midpoint or a little slightly left or right. I mean, it wasn't there wasn't a whole lot except for the final choice of the game, where it yeah, was like ninety five percent. There's a <laughs> there's a very few choices that were like very extreme, yeah. and um, but I can't remember which ones were off the top of my head. Yeah. So basically, if you agree to kill larry then you lose lily's favor and kenny either way kenny kills him but it's just whose favor you Mm. you gain or you you gain or lose lily's favor it doesn't really affect your friendship with kenny at all so i just was like i'm not killing him but oh man there's that thing over there (laughs) Looks pretty yeah. heavy, guys. Like, so, 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 Jason, so you very, you seem like you pretty much, you generally sided with Kenny in most of the arguments yeah. then with yeah. between him and Lily. Uh, yeah. Chris uh, and Captain, what did you. What, between the Kenny and Yeah, Larry? Kenny and Lily. Oh, Kenny Lily? And Lily. Um, there was, I think, two times when I sided with Lily, but most of the time I would go with Kenny. But there was at least two times where a point that she made made more sense to me than what Kenny was saying. Because Kenny. A couple of times sounds a little unhinged. Mm. Yeah. So I was just kind of like, you're talking, you're talking some shit. Lily at least is making a little bit of sense. I'll go with Lily. And there was a couple of times where I went back and forth, but for the most part, I would say like 75% of that time where I went with Kenny. Yeah. I think I I sided with Kenny pretty much every time. I don't know if I ever sided with Lily. They both have unhinged moments. And if they were Mm -hmm. being unhinged, I would generally be like, I'm sane. Pick the sane one. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're flipping out about this without, Any evidence? How about let's you know when it's about the medication thing? 
mm-hmm. one missing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, I'm not saying it didn't, but you're just like pointing a finger immediately. That that kind of shit. I was like, key, I, I was a peacekeeper. I think. Basically. I, yeah, I think I think I that's kind of the way I kind of went too. It was like whoever made more sense to me was who I went with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you're, if you're flipping out, control yourself, man. <laughs> yeah, get those emotions under the control. They're gonna be your undoing. So yeah. then, episode two ends with uh, another choice that seems like it might not be very significant in the moment. More just like a moral decision that ends up being a very significant choice in the long run which i loved how this all came together in the end but you come across an abandoned car that is running that has lights on uh doors are open there's nobody there and it has it's full of full of supplies and one one thing that was interesting as i was like um i was just checking out some stuff like videos on youtube after i had finished all of season one and you can very I like it. it. It's very obvious what choice people made because, uh, you, well, you, everybody else, the whole party, like they want to take all the supplies. Clem Clementine does not want to take the supplies. So then you make a decision whether or not you're going to abstain from taking the supplies or take the supplies. Um, what did you guys choose? I chose to leave the supplies behind and go with Clem. I chose, I chose to oh, go ahead, Jason. Oh, sorry. I chose to convince her, like, we need this stuff. Not just like, we're doing this. I, I was always really, like, careful with how I worded things to her. So I'd be like, we need these things. No one's around. Yeah, Smash. I did the same thing. I mean, the I think the doors were left open in the station wagon. There was nobody around. It seemed like somebody left in a hurry. Like, there was a zombie attacking them. So I was like, we need the supplies. And yeah. so I convinced her to, like, hey, we should do this. We need it. Yeah, and and it's 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 a tough choice because it's like the for me it was like yeah it's hard to say there is no signs of like blood or like so there's a potential and they're like well maybe maybe they just like they went somewhere and they're gonna come back and if, if you take the supplies Clementine gets a hoodie and she has that hoodie on for the rest of the game if you don't take the supplies she does not get that hoodie. So if you go and look on YouTube videos for like people on the last episode or the end choice, like either she's wearing that hoodie or she's not. And Mm -hmm. it's like I said, it it comes into play, uh, especially in in episode five. Also, uh, um, did you kill the guy or did you not kill the guy when he had the chance? Oh, yes, that's right. Um, Danny, Danny, Danny Danny and Andy. um, There's a choice uh, after the whole Larry incident. Um, you set up a bear trap and Dan, or there's a bear trap. I don't know who set up the bear trap. I can't remember. Danny gets yeah. caught in the bear trap. I think Kenny can make the choice. Tra- you can make the choice whether to spare him or kill him. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. What'd you guys choose for that? I killed him. I'm like, these people are cannibals. If we let them live and they find us again, like we might not survive. So let's just take care of them. Yeah, my thinking was I was always trying to not upset Clementine, so I I chose to spare him. And I like I think he says something like they'll get theirs at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, when if you spare them, Jason. Um, I uh, showed her that it's okay to kill if you use a sweet one liner like "eat this" and just <laughs> just get bad. <laughs> Yeah, he, he yeah, got for some stuff. reason I was always trying to take the moral high ground with things. Yeah, I'm like he's gonna see some shit. No, yeah, this and this one for some reason, like in the moment, like I was just caught up in the moment. Even though I had already played this before, like I was caught up in the moment, and I was like, you know what, this guy just tried to kill us, all the stuff. Take him out. So I took him out, um, yeah. and then I felt really bad because then Clementine sees that and says, Clementine, so sort of remember that, right? Yeah, yeah. I like ah, that. crap. But at the same time, I'm like, normally I'm a moral guy, but these people yeah. are eating other people. Like, right. You know, they can't survive. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I was like Spock when it comes, to, you know, in the first uh, Star Trek reboot. No, not really. Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they blew, they blew up my planet. <laughs> and then after the whole uh, uh, 
the rest of the incident, you, Brenda gets chomped by a zombie, uh, and then you end up having a by, by zombie guy you were eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good, good little revenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and me then rush the meal eats you. Then you have the big brawl out with uh, Andy, and then you can make another choice whether or not to. I'm assuming keep pum- pummeling him until he's dead, or not kill him. Um, what did you guys do? I left him behind. Oh uh, wait, no. I think I stopped, but then doesn't he get he, he gets he dies eaten. anyways? Yeah, he gets leave him. Eaten. Yeah, if you leave him, he gets uh, he gets yeah, attacked by zombies. Yeah, because I, I felt bad with Clementine's reaction to me killing the other guy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I, I I left him as well. Jason, you took. Him I was you? merciful and uh-huh. I, I laid that beating on him till he died. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I'm I'm doing this to save you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So then, it, it, then we go go to the abandoned car, and that wraps up uh, chapter two or episode two. So three, a short time after our protagonists find themselves in another bit of, di- of a dilemma with in- internal strife brewing, will our heroes be able to pull it together long enough to be all right? Um, and this is where like a lot of like, di- there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of exposition in this chapter. This is a real Lots of choices. This, yeah. This episode. Yeah, there's something think, going on inside the camp it, that yeah. we need to investigate. This episode is the hardest to get through. Like, yeah, it's there was so much bad shit happened. Yeah, yeah. that was when that was when I, t- I I in the uh, the tweet thread where I was just like, this shit's depressing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, so they they kind of start you off. You're um you go with uh, Kenny. You're going back to the pharmacy to see to get some more supplies or medicine. So um, you can find in the town and whatever. And as you're climbing over some debris, some. A uh, woman comes out just like screaming bloody murder. Um, zombies all over the place. Uh, I don't believe it. They don't make it clear if she's been bitten or anything. I think she's just there. And there's a whole bunch of zombies. And you got to make a cho- choice. Uh, you can either her, um, leave her. Kenny wants you to leave her. She's a good distraction. She'll keep the zombies at bay. Or you could be merciful if you and you can shoot her so it's like leave her to be killed by zombies or shoot her yourself which is like man that's not it's not, not not an easy choice uh what did you guys go with did you leave her or did you shoot her i left her um and this was such a hard decision because if, if i was in that girl's shoes i would want someone to shoot me so i didn't get the pain of being eaten by zombies but since I wasn't the one possibly getting eaten, like I knew that if I made the shot, the zombies would come after us and would hear us. It's like, she's a goner pretty much. We got to just have as much time as we can. So I left her. My indecision got the better of me on that one. Ah, so she, did she still just get eaten? Yeah. I, I took too long to make the decision and you basically leave her behind. Like Kenny's like, just get your ass moving. Let's go. And yeah. you're like, ah, uh, okay. Just, <laughs> this is off Kenny in the process. Yeah. Kind of sit and mm-hmm. watch. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah and then, yeah, good. you hear her. They, they really make you feel guilty, man. You just hear her screaming, like, bloody yeah. murder in the back. I can hear them crunching from here. Yeah. Jason, what'd you do? I'm an absolute paragon uh, of mankind, and I did the merciful thing, and I, I'm a woman shooter. So, there you go. <laughs> what a good guy. So you know, people ask about me. They'll be like, "He's a good guy. He'll shoot a woman if he has to." Should we name yourself <laughs> me? <laughs> me the merciful. Which I think. Uh, I think the big, the big change here then is the amount of time you get to loot the pharmacy for supplies. Um, uh, these hands is fast. Yeah, I got like twelve. <laughs> I think I picked up like twelve things. Yeah, so, yeah. I think I got like everything you could get. Do you remember how many items you were able to get, Jason? Yeah, I got everything I saw, and then, then you get There's back and like bit. they're like, "That's it." I'm like, "Yeah, fuck you." <laughs> I, um, you know what I did for us? I shoot women for us, and you. This is how you talk to me. <laughs> this is oh, church. Did you say you did? Did you shoot her or leave her? I left her. Um, 
I wanted to be merciful, but yeah, they, it's pretty much, she's gone at that point. And this is one of those times where it's like, I just, I feel terrible. I mean, it is what it is. She was dead either way. So, yeah. So does us. not shoot, d- does shooting her it cut down the time you have to pick things up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, being yeah. a paragon and also a thug, I was like, Bra, bra, and <laughs> handle my business. <laughs> yeah. Can you shoot the zombies? No. Uh, okay. Why would I do that? Come on, man. Uh-huh. Sick. Sick. Uh, yeah. So then you get back to the to the motor end, the motel, and now you see like a lot of the boards. There's like arrows. So you've been under attack in various uh, ways over the last while. Um, lots of building tensions. You got to decide who gets food. Uh, food's disappearing. And uh, that's yeah, where you, you, get, you get asked to investigate. Mm-hmm. Yep. You, you investigate, find out that somebody's been sneaking out supplies. You don't know who, you don't know why. Um, There's a big red X on the wall over there. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to look at my notes here to remember exactly how things went down. Well, then you have the option of having like Duck help you, um, if you yeah. want to be your like be your assistant or whatever. Yeah, I he wants him. to be he wants to be Robin. Robin. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, dude, this is such a depressing time. Yeah, you have you have fun. You can be you can be Robin. Yeah, I let him be my my assistant. Even yep. though even though I neglected to give him the high five. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll I, 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 like took, I would have a second I chance to long. do it. Yeah, and I you thought left I could do someone hanging. Yeah, I felt. <laughs> yeah, I did. I thought I knew you, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it actually said that. I was like, you left duck hanging. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, thanks. <laughs> you feel like that's the worst um, thing you made. The while you're investigating, you, you have the option. Like Carly says, she wants to talk to you. Um, I chose not to because I thought that would like. I would move the story along and I wanted mm. to investigate. Did anyone go to talk to Carly? Yeah, I did. Yep. Okay, so what was that all about? She wants you to tell everybody what you did to, uh, at the beginning of the game, like that you were, that you were on the way to jail for murder. Got it. I knew she'd hold that shit up to me. She's not she's not saying if you don't do it, I'm going to tell. Mm-hmm. But she's like you need to you need to just be honest with everybody and let them know what's Always going on. Always in my business. Really didn't matter that I didn't talk to her. Not so much. Um it gives you more more cred with everybody if you do yeah and you know at this point like the the fractures are really starting to 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 come up uh lily and kenny are just like at each other's throats uh the food's disappearing lily thinks it's carly um ben's ben's kind of freaking out Mm -hmm. yeah he ben's yeah ben's i thought it was ben right away he was my my first guest in my game, uh, I think she was blaming Doug, or who was it? Maybe Kenny. I can't remember who she thought was stealing the stuff. I would assume it would be what's, Doug. What's the kid? What's the kid's name? Ben. 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 Yeah, Ben was the one that was freaking out on top of the uh, yeah. the RV. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the. Bandits. You figure out that well. You see that thing yeah. outside in the wall, right? That there's a bag of med of meds, so you know somebody's setting stuff out there. But then after mm-hmm. once you go to talk to Lily, all of a sudden all hell breaks loose. Oh yeah, and that's the right. yeah they're like, "Where's our shit?" Yeah. <laughs> Show up in force. There's the big shootout. Um, lots of opportunities to die there, but they're all like game overs. Not actually like losing yeah. characters. And then Duck good, gets good. bitten. Well, it's a good thing I had so much practice with shooting people in the head, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so, so yeah, and, and, yeah, Duck gets bitten, then you all take off in the RV. Everybody's freaking out about everything that's going on. Um, pull over the RV. Everybody goes out and starts fighting. Lily, Kenny, Carly. Um, this is a pretty, another pretty big, uh, decision that 
Uh, this is the one we were discussing before the before we recorded. Yeah, and this is this is an interesting choice because um, the reason I I'm not 100 percent on this, but this is one of the things where it plays out. I think generally the same way, regardless of what choices you make. Um, so for us, Jason, I'm assuming it was Lily and Doug fighting. Or, yeah, uh, how, no, how it was you... Lily. Lily was trying to. Th- I think she was trying to throw Ben off off the RV because she was just so cer- sure it was him and and all that shit. And I was just like, "Leave him alone. We'll figure this out later." Is right now like really the time to be doing this on the side of the road? And then she just goes to like shoot him, and then Doug gets in the way. Ah, I was like, "Oh, okay. my bro, Doug." Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so for, for the rest of us it was um Lily was pretty certain that it was Carly. Mm-hmm. And I mean she already made up her mind at that point. Yeah, she was like it's Carly and it could have been Ben. Yep. And yep. you can you can you can make some accusations or you can stay neutral and just try to calm everything down. Uh Ben's trying to calm down the situation and Lily just just straight up shoots Carly. Yeah. Blast her right in the face because I, I was trying to bring my the... god dropped. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was just out of us all of a sudden. Boom, Carly's dead. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, because like, I was trying to calm everything down. I was yeah. like, can we just like be calm about this and talk next? You know, bam. <laughs> so, is there a way to save her, or does she die no matter what? She dies no matter what. Okay, well then I feel better because I was like, oh shit, I like <laughs> that's Carly. that's what we were talking about beforehand. I was just kind of like, yeah. My, but if my you don't indi- know, another thing where my indecision kind of took yeah. over, and I missed one of the conversations to make a choice, and bam, yeah. And, then, <laughs> and I was and, like, did I just caused that. Did I just cause her to die? Yeah, and I think it's definitely like uh, if you don't know what's going on or what to expect, I, I think the game is definitely better enjoyed that way. Oh yeah, not I never really looked anything on. up. Uh, and yeah, that's that's a pretty wild moment there. And then you have to make a decision whether you're gonna. We'll figure this out, and you let Lily back on the RV, or you tell her, "Nope, you're staying," and you just ditch her on the side of the road. Uh, what did you guys decide to do with Lily? Did you take her with or leave her? I ditched her. I'm like, I'm not letting her back in the bus when she just randomly shoots Carly. Yeah, Carly was like my girl. There, I felt like they were kind of setting her up to be like your romantic interest, and uh-huh. she just fucking aces her, yeah, out of the blue. And I was like, "Nope, you ain't coming with us. You're staying on the side of the road." Jason, I was like, now you're the only choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it is kind of a sausage fest after yeah. that. Yeah. Or did you let her back on the RV? Fucks no. Okay. Bye, Felicia. We, we yeah. So you get her on the side of the road. The uh, dust. If, uh, if you do not ditch her on the side of the road and you decide to let her back on the RV, uh, this is just because I actually... I'd read some stuff, but she actually um, holds every, sticks everybody up, kicks everybody else off the RV, and she steals the RV. Oh, wow. And leaves you all on the side of the road. And I guess uh, we're huffing it. <laughs> without, and I, 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 I want to be very careful about not trying to spoil anything for future seasons, but she comes back. <laughs> Something might happen down the road because she of this back. choice don't know what it is but it's pretty cool so yeah so then we got the whole situation uh of a duck being bitten ken and kenny and you know kenny's the guy oh larry had a heart attack we're gonna smash his head you know we're gonna take care of anybody else that's been dealt with but duck's been bitten and he's gonna completely ignore it ignore <laughs> it no he's yeah. gonna be fine he's gonna sleep it off and he's gonna be good yeah, you're not on a it. father you don't know what it feels like yeah. yeah and i think this this part starts getting like this i mean there's been a lot of heavy moments but this is all pretty pretty heavy stuff too uh there's, there's a lot of use of the sad music in this one yes that one uh, piece of music they keep playing uh, over uh, and over again <laughs> well it's like the, the it's like one of the main the themes of the anthem yeah, yeah. The, the, it's like the main the theme for the whole series so yeah so then you come upon a train uh engine with a box car a single box car and then the rest of the box cars are derailed um you find out somebody was living there and then you meet chuck I like chuck. Actually... chuck is you know he's kind of your no nonsense you know he's a nice guy nothing wrong with a little hobo yeah. 
<laughs> you know, he's been he living alcohol. Yeah. More like whole more like whole bro. He was just throwing down right away. He's chill as shit, yeah. Um so then as you're trying to figure out, you know, hey, we're gonna try to see if we can get this train working because it's all in operating order. Um, you end up getting into a little scuffle with Kenny that can go in multiple ways. Um how did you guys handle that? Did you fight him? Did you take the punches? How 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 did that whole situation boil out for you? Did for me, Kenny, like I wasn't good enough at like like I think you can dodge the blows or something, but I'm not great with controller. I'm I'm more of like I, t- I tend to be more of a PC gamer, so I always struggle with like quick actions with analog sticks. And I Lee got his ass beat basically. Kenny Kenny laid him out pretty well. What happened with you guys? I don't yeah, think I, they I, got into a fight. I think I was able yeah. to like. Calm oh, the situation I down. don't recall having a fight either. Okay, maybe I'm I made poor choices then. Oh, he was fighting. Because if I remember correctly, I reasoned and like the wife stepped in. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that sounds right. Okay. How about you, Jason? Yeah, he was was putting some hands on me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Didn't take kindly. And then then pretty much immediately after this, um, Koch is basically like, you know, it's time, ducks, ducks going and. Yeah, uh, so I don't know. This, let... this was where I texted you guys, and I was like, "This is some depressing <laughs> shit." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what, what what happens next? When you guys take over? Yeah. So you have what? You have the choice, right? <laughs> you can shoot duck, or you can let Kenny Can you or... do it? Yeah. yeah. Well, what happens before we it? even get to that choice? Because you hear a gunshot. Yeah. Right. Right. But I'm saying, well, because no, this is before before they head down to the woods. Right, no, you're by I'm... the train, and like you can either give you. They're trying to just get oh, the yeah. gun from you. Yeah, and so I, because it's they're the they're the parents. I'm like, yeah, you you guys do it. I didn't want to take care of it. Yeah, I decided I decided to do it for them because I was like, I don't want them to have to kill their own kid. Hmm. I emptied the clip, bro. I emptied the clip. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I I was on purpose bad accuracy all over by the legs and stuff and I was like oh got him well got seven that. or eight shots later got him uh, yeah so save some of those bullets for yourself <laughs> so if you guys volunteered to take care of duck does what happens with Katya because for us for me she still the, kills herself okay yeah okay yeah because they want to go and kind of say goodbye you yeah, so like you stay behind head. and they kind of go off, and you, you're walking gotcha. slowly behind, them. and then you hear boom. Okay, so and then you same, run over same there. Result. And, yeah, yeah, you run over there, and she's laying there dead with the gun right. in her hand. So yeah, the way we did it, Katja went with Duck, mm-hmm. and we're just talking with Kenyo, and we hear the gunshots. So we're like, okay, let's go console Katja, and then you see Katja on the ground. Yeah, it's like, so maybe she should talk Katja gun safety instead of uh, Clem. Yeah. So then you got a decision of if you wanted to do it or Kenny wanted to do it, and I I had Kenny do it. Hmm. I I did it for him because he just that would, probably would have been a good like wake up and realize what's going on moment for him. But I was like, he's so like broken at this point that like maybe I could just take take a little bit off of him. And yeah, I was like, he just like him. his wife is laying there dead. I was like, I'll just I'll make, take care of this dude. Just don't worry about it. Make him do it, but like massage his shoulders. Like you got this. You got this king. I'm not I'm not exactly <laughs> sure like start doing like, like cheerleading stuff in the background. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how like what the difference, like if you have Kenny do it or you do it, like I don't know what that impacts down the road. Um I think it might have probably just I th- more I think Kenny's it was a Clement I think it was a Clementine thing also. It like affected her. It was like that you killed you've killed her friend kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But I think mostly it affected Kenny and the way he thinks towards you. Yeah, because when I talked to Clem, I told her what I did. And yeah, I, I remember I was able to like do it like in an understanding way, and she seemed to understand. Well, she's, yeah, she's smart. She knows what's what's up by this point. Yeah. So she's kind of like, "Oh, he was about to turn. I get it." She, for the most part, never was like, "Wow, you're kind of a piece of shit, Haley." Yeah, <laughs> she was always like, "I get it. They were bad." I was like, "I had to pitchfork that guy nine times in the face." See. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So then they they get the train going. They head out on the train. Um, you have a little like conversation with Chuck, and he kind of tells you what's up. He, he's kind of being pretty judgy about how you're handling uh, Clementine. So he kind of suggests teaching her how to shoot, cutting her hair, which I think that leads to like, it's like one of the like more powerful moments of like interaction between Lee and Clem talking about this and kind of like the situation. And it's like a, a one of the like bigger bonding moments, I think mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I know I've got to cut your hair, but I'll do the best I can. And, you know, given her survival tips, that's pretty, pretty much really starts like advising her on like, yeah, this is how you shoot. You want to keep your hair short so that it's not so grabbable, stuff like that. Cause then from there on, he seems to give her more like, you see, when we do this, he'll kind of like explain shit to her off to the side, like why he's doing shit. And so he's like giving her the skills she needs. Yeah. yeah, you said it was one of the bigger bonding moments, but I also felt it was one of the worst gameplay moments. Is when you're trying to mm-hmm. tell her where she needs to shoot, and you yeah. how do you you don't even know what you're looking at. Yeah, that was terrible. there's no reticle to say you're off too far to the left or you're too low. You basically have to guess it. Yeah. Iron sights, da da. Yeah. So that I'm sitting there going like, what what is this shit? <laughs> I'm like, this is dumb. <laughs> I think it's more so just trying to like, I think it's a boost of confidence. Like, I don't know how it plays out if you miss a bunch of shots. Like, I think I only missed like one or two shots. At the end, once you flee eight times. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't try to shoot right. So, she's like, like, well, if you've been a good My teacher, ruse sorry, worked. <laughs> yeah, you I, gave me the gun. I was curious about the shooting because I wondered if it was just because like she got better so you didn't miss as much. So I think I missed once the first time, once the second time, and then the third time I hit it on the first shot. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I think it it, it probably plays out the same way each time, and they just make us think that I, we're doing things does, different. Doesn't but... she automatically miss one, like, at the beginning? And then you start... The first shot, is she, yeah, she missed for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when I had to advise her, I don't think she missed. Yeah. Uh, so then eventually... Uh, we keep going on the train. We have to stop because we come across a an overpass, and there's uh, a tanker truck that's like jackknifed off off the overpass, blocking the path. Um, exit the train. Ben, like Ben, is like losing his, his shit at this point, and he's he's do racked with guilt because he admits that he was stealing the supplies for the bandits to keep the bandits from attacking them at the at the motor inn, and he wants to tell everybody. Um, my guess is at this point, if you allow him to do it, like Kenny would like probably lose his mind. So I like talked him down, like shut your mouth. I was pretty yeah. aggressive about it too. I told him like, keep it, just, just hold it in. We'll, t- we'll do it eventually. Right. Cause this is not the time. It's not, yeah, it's not the time. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. what I told him. Um, and then we meet, uh, Krista and Omid, Omid, Krista and Omid, um, uh, a couple they're just doing their thing and they decide to join up and help out and we have a, a couple scenes we go over to like the the train station with uh clem she gets to have a little uh action scene there kills it for a zombie mm-hmm. a couple yeah. zombies i gotta say this was the puzzle that took me the longest to figure out I went back and forth between the station and the train three like three times because I did not notice that you could look at that top window and have her crawl through. I was like, "What the <laughs> hell do I need to do?" Yeah, I, thought, I like left everywhere with. I the, made I made it a point crawl. every time one of those reticle scenes happens where it's like I I go around the whole <laughs> thing just so I can <laughs> get a vision of everything that's in I the area. I could have sworn I went over that little window, we'll but I just we'll not. And then finally, I get over there a third time, and I do. I'm like. Fuck, how did I miss that? <laughs> I just, yeah, I was walking I, lasso it the whole time. And you have it on stream. <laughs> for, for some reason, there's a couple. Uh, so once you get through the window, then you have to prop the door open. And for some reason, I wasn't, I didn't know. I don't know why it was right there. I didn't notice the the icon for the whatever tool you had that you could use that to prop the door. So I, I was like going in and out of the building, like probably like three, four times. Like, what the hell? And I was like, oh, 
It's right there. Prop the door open. This is like this is like the only part in the game where I really had like a moment where I was like, "What the hell am I doing?" Uh, but yeah, eventually you get the the tanker free. A horde shows up. Um, can't remember. Do you jump back on the train? Yeah, you jump on the train. You take off. Yeah, you and Ometer on the on the overpass, and you have to, yeah. he won't oh, jump. Yes. You, get the, you get the choice to push him or whatever. <laughs> yep. Uh, I didn't push him. I tried to encourage him. I was like, "Jump, yep. you fool!" And he didn't. He ends up. I, I'm sure the result's the same. I think he like messes up his leg regardless. Yeah. Um, and this is like one of my instinctive moments. So as the trains go in, uh, everybody's on the train except Krista and Omid. They're running next to the train and you're given the choice to help one of them on the train. And for me, as the reticle was going across the screen, it was uh, Krista and Omid was in front of her and the reticle, you go across Krista to get to Omid. And because it like, reticled over her gave me the option i like it just instinctively hit the button uh did you guys get krista or omid on the train first i, I did omid. i did omid my thought process was well he's hurt yeah. right so like he's not gonna be able to run as much chris yeah. is healthy so i'm gonna get the hurt guy on the train first and then she can catch up i, I think that's the jason i'm sure i'm assuming you did the same thing no no, I was like, I, you. I, just, I was like, you like he's gonna crippled? slow us down. Get the girl. Yeah, you are crippled. <laughs> Get the girl. The girl. I need more choices. Yeah, for me, I was just like, I was like, oh, I gotta do. I gotta make a choice. So as I was like scrolling the reticle across, I hit, hit Krista first, and I just helped her. And you pull her on the train, and then she gets like super pissed. Yeah, because it looked for a second there, it's like, oh crap, I just killed this guy because he like falls well, back off the he, screen, he, and then he comes back and jumps back on the train. Because if he dies. Her boyfriend's gone. I got a new potential love interest. So like, <laughs> whatever. He's trying to get uh, late in the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then uh basically the, the chapter ends with uh a message over the walkie from a stranger. And it's like, what? Yeah, who's been talking ah. to Clint? Mm-hmm. The walkie's yeah. working. It's like, what the heck? And it's uh, not her parents. Yeah. So then we move on to episode four. Uh, Lee and his group now find themselves in Savannah. Together they find a house that seems safe enough except for a young walker that strangely resembles someone in their group. In Savannah, Lee and Clementine come across Molly, a mysterious figure who rings church bells to draw walkers away from areas she scavenges. At the same time, warns them about Crawford, a militant group that could potentially endanger our characters. So again, this is another very busy chapter. Lots, lots going on here. Yeah, it's pretty... I mean, they're all pretty action-packed. And, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't even say it's like only at the end, kind of like we were talking about with the episodes of the yeah. show. Uh, it's pretty, it's peaks and valleys a lot. Like you kind of get a time to breathe a little bit in sometimes, but for the most part, you're always like watching your back in this game. That's why yeah, I like. I, I did think this was the only episode that was mostly like peak. Like it, I didn't feel like until the end of the episode, I felt like everything was going pretty well. Like I didn't feel bad about anything. <laughs> yeah. And then the ending happened. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. So we get into Savannah. Uh, things are looking up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Things are seeming okay. Things are seeming clear. Then the, the bells start going. We see a person on the roof. Um, yeah. We end up running from the zombies because it call, brings the zombies. We end up at um, kind of like a, I think they called it a mansion. I don't mm-hmm. think it was a mansion. Yeah, it was just a, just a, a big house. house. A bigger <laughs> house. Uh, but it was well fortified, gates, everything's boarded up. Um, as the description mentioned, there was a, a kid, uh, there was a family there at some point, that, and I don't, we don't know what happened to them, but they left their kid in the attic. And he yeah. probably died of starvation. He hide up and he dehydrated. And uh, Cap thinks that's peak and awesome. So that's cool. I didn't know that about him. <laughs> hey, I said mostly, okay? 
uh well if it's not that then we got then we got our uh our, our dead dog in the backyard that we get to to dig up and yeah more highlights. That was that was hey, great. I mean, dog could have died of a natural cause. Everyone's got a kink. Come on. Yeah, it definitely wasn't like, a zombie dog. Plus, cats are better than dogs. So, that, dog. the, the kid, the kid in the in the attic is definitely like the most depressive thing that, that happens to not your party. You're yeah, like, oh, I, gotta, I gotta watch those little leg crack when he tries to stand up. That, that's oh yeah, it's like he can't even. Stand up properly because he's so withered away. Yeah, even as a zombie, he's just he's like, weak as shit. Pathetic. <laughs> I, it didn't bother me that much because it was already done. Like he was already a zombie before. Like yeah. there's nothing we could do to save him. Yeah. And that was just. You know, but did you me... kill him or did you let Kenny do it? I did. Same. Yeah. Same as before. I. I. Yeah. Kenny was still like long gone at this point so i was just like i'll just deal yeah the whole with the whole thing he already uh, killed his own son i'm like i'll handle this rando i took care of it do it again i was was doing all the heavy lifting for kenny in this in this game (laughs) yeah yeah for a guy who acts like such a tough guy and yeah he's such a wuss yeah the moment moment he gets yeah yeah, moment there's a tough choice he crumbles yeah um uh then uh Lee and uh, Kenny go down to a waterfront. You're going to try to find boats because that was really the whole plan. Um, from I, I think episode two, uh, yeah. Kenny is like, "We got to get to the to the sh- uh, coast. We'll get a boat. We'll get out of here." So just kind of fulfilling that plan. That's kind of been the plan for. Like he's the only person who came up with that plan, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, well, nobody else thought of that. Yeah, yeah. when he's we started suggesting that, I was just like, you you know that. There's not going to be any boats when we get there, right? Everyone who wants a boat probably uses their boat. Uh, but then we get down to the to the waterfront as we're looking around. There's a pretty gnarly scene, uh, kind of related. I I don't know if you can tie it with your your name, kind of like a corpse flood sort of thing. Yeah, a little bit. Wall yeah. of corpses. Yeah, pretty. Rotten body a landslide. Pike, I don't know. Pikes. Yeah, mountain of bodies. Let's yeah, pretty. Pikes. Pretty. Kind of like. Uh, living fence to scare away any intruders, basically. Yeah, gnarly. I was like, I need to get me one of those. It's good. No. <laughs> uh, and this is where we get introduced to Molly. Which, by yeah. the way, I have no idea how Molly got behind me. Okay. Do you oh, know when she was hiding behind the newsstand? She's in the newsstand? Like, you look and she's there, and all of a sudden she's behind you. Yeah. yeah. There's Morgan no way in hell she was getting it. behind us. She's yeah, because she ducks. To be the next Robin. Yeah, yeah she so ducks she down, down and like you're looking at the stand, like you can see. Right. So is there like a trap door you didn't know about? Some voodoo shit there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So you meet up with Molly, <laughs> and um, <laughs> of course, as as usual, more zombies show up. Uh, no, because Kenny, Molly, and ever. Kenny. <laughs> oh yeah, because Kenny popped a shot off. Yeah, oh, Molly's you can do that. Reason. You can do that earlier, but you know, yeah. drop your gun. Weak, weak. Yeah. So Molly and Kenny get oh, up a fire Kenny. escape. Lee has no choice but to go down uh, into the sewers. Um. Yeah. Yeah, we find uh, Chuck. Yeah, poor Chuck's guy. in the sewers. He had he had like when the first horde of from the bell came, he had like tried to save the group, and he's like, "I'll be fine." And you're like, "Go on, okay, yeah. <laughs> all right, no worries." He wasn't fine, and then he's zombie food in the sewers. <laughs> uh, and then we eventually find a fallout shelter uh, that has a remnants of a cancer survivor group led by uh, Vernon. There's Vernon Bree. Um, I don't remember the other names Boyd. of the other characters. Boyd, Boyd. Well. yeah. Bree was like, "I'm like, is this Joyce? the new Larry?" Joyce is in there. Yeah, yeah, and they're all yeah. It's, Karen. It's the, mor- it's the morgue of a hospital, <laughs> basically, that they yep. made into a yep. camp. And that's when we kind of find out more about uh, what's behind that 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 wall of corpses. Um, Crawford, what's going on with Crawford? Crawford is the- gone. It's just zombies they're all well it was that utopian society thing at first yeah right it sounded more like uh... out right people that were sick children anybody who would be like a liability 
they're kicking yeah. out and then it ended up getting screwed anyways because they all died because yeah, that girl didn't want an abortion or that girl wanted the abortion right no she yeah. she, she, wanted to, she wanted to cover it up she wanted to cover yeah. it up yeah yeah because a pregnant person's a weakness yeah mm-hmm. even though they're a hold up yep right. and then we find more about uh molly's backstory um she was trying to save her sister. Her sister had, had diabetes and was just trying to get medicine to, you know, so Crawford didn't take out her sister. Um, I don't remember exactly what happened with the they sister. Kicked, they, 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 they took her and killed she, her. They took her and killed her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, she couldn't save her sister, so she took off. Yeah, that's right. Um Let's see what else. So yeah, going to Crawford, we're going to a school to get. Um, well, you bring for... you bring Vernon back to help out Omid's leg. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. And then you you want then you discover there's a boat in the shed in the back of the house and it's missing a battery and gas. So that's when you go to Crawford. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, did you guys take Clem with, or did you leave her behind? Left her behind. I took her with. I took her with. Because the whole she can fit in the tight spaces and stuff like that. I was like, we might need that. Yeah. I just figured she was pretty well fortified in the house. And I'm like, I don't want to risk yeah. anything happening to her. But Omid's there and he could potentially die from the infection. That's what, that was the other reason I took her with. Hmm. I, didn't, well, I didn't really think about that. I didn't, her, or I didn't quite Omid. trust them yet. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. For me, it was more, uh, there, there was a previous, I, I think it was the train conversation actually when uh, Lee and Clement time were on the train that like, he was like, you know, we're a team. We're going to stick together. Not going to leave you behind. She didn't want to be left behind. So I was like, all right, yeah, let's go. I didn't take her to the waterfront. Um, well, that's later. No, water, waterfront was before. Yeah. That's where you meet. Shows uh, up, uh, yeah. Shows yeah, up yeah. When you meet Molly. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. That's right. And then Molly brings them all back to the mansion. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you go to Crawford, you get all that stuff. Of course, you run into zombies and stuff like that. Yeah, because um, like the whole place is overrun with zombies. Right. But you get everything you need, right? You get the, mm-hmm. the bat. You need a battery. You needed fuel, and then some people got some. Went to the nurses' station. You get the meds, medicine, and yeah. then you're trying to break into the armory to arm up because you might need to shoot your way out. Because mm. it, mm-hmm. as it turns out, no one's alive in Crawford, despite their Seemingly flawless rules. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then, of course, through uh, various circumstances, zombies show up again. Shock uh, what? This is a game ball zombie? Yeah, you find out, you find Molly takes one of the zombies, she sees it and it's like takes it personally. Mm-hmm. Yep. What's um, up with that? Yeah, it turns out that that was the doctor that. She, she was, was molesting her. She was sleeping with him, kind of. I guess yeah, to get, meds. To get the meds. Yeah. Yep. And then, um, so zombies attack. Then we got a choice as we're trying to escape. Uh, ben uh, falls. I don't remember exactly how he fell, but he's oh, like, hey, you're jumping. You're jumping across the buildings, and the railing that he was standing on. No, that was moved. later. That's later. This later. is when you're climbing like the um, the bell tower, kind of the thing. bell tower. Oh yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. hanging, and, like, and he's over like the railing, and he's you like let let me fall, him. let me die. He's like I like you guys well, did escape. You, did you guys let him confess to Kenny before this? Yes, yes, yes. I I believe I because so. remember he's well, racked with guilt, and he's like yeah, I, yeah. I can't hold it in anymore. You're like it's huh, huh, time. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think no matter what you pick, he's going to do it anyway. Yeah. That's the way it seems to just, me. Yeah. yeah, it's just how Kenny feels about it. like, oh, you're trying to keep it for me. He'll either take it personally or be like, just mad at Ben. So he's either mad yeah. at both of you or he's mad at Ben. I think. Yeah. So when he's like, "Fuck Ben, drop him." Uh, I say- oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, I didn't, I did not drop Ben. I saved Ben. What did yeah, you guys I saved, do? I saved him. Um, and <laughs> I saved him. You know, yeah. I always uh, like stuck up for Ben, even though he was a dumbass. Yeah, bad for him. Generally, I'd be like, "Fuck him, leave him alone, and just 
because it was always when they bicker it was always like we're running away from someone right now can we like fucking leave ben alone for a second <laughs> it was always yeah, like the was worst always, the kenny worst like, timing yeah kenny was just always picking on ben yeah yeah and but it was always like at the worst time you're like okay yeah. it's not when we're like hanging around the house you guys are buddies and everything any other time but it's like all of a sudden our life is in our hands right now and you're like right like, now we gotta let's hash this out and you're like yeah that uh so yeah then eventually we get back to the to the mansion all this is going down uh kenny's like we got to get out of here um molly leaves because she's like nuts to you guys um then you gotta basically clem's like hey are we gonna go find my parents and i if, if i remember right the you the, the only choices you had was like we we can't do it. We gotta go, and basically or, or tell her they're dead, <laughs> or she yeah. knows you're lying, or she knows you're lying. Like, uh, we gotta go. And, there might be time, and she's like, "Well, have you been telling her up to this point? Whenever she asks, are you were you gonna look for her parents when you got there?" Yeah, so, I had yeah, been I saying, "I'll say we'll." Try. I, I, said, I, I said, "I said if we, would. I said if we can, if we, if we can, yeah. we will." Yeah, and which I was, but no matter what that, you do, she ends up going to sleep crying. Yeah, yeah you, she basically breaks like. You know that that's when she things all kind of fall apart. She goes to sleep crying. Um, you go to sleep. Uh, you wake up. You you put the radio down. Yeah, for whatever mm-hmm. reason. And yep, so. uh, you wake up. Clem's gone. Radio's gone. You look around the house. She's not there. You go outside. Um, then you see the walkie-talkie. You, you hear yep. it squawking over the over yep. the fence. You jump over. You find it. What else do you find, fellas? God damn it! The, the like, like Fucking second to worst, po- yeah. worst thing in this game happens right here, Fucking next zombie. to Larry dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So Lee goes to pick up the walkie-talkie. So I the game brought why. me back to caring again. Couldn't yeah. couldn't look. <laughs> couldn't just like look. He just yeah. reached. Well, you had a, you could look at the board that was sitting there, and I wonder. I didn't, and I wondered if you had looked at it, if it would have changed anything. But obviously, I know now it wouldn't change anything. Yeah, for I I I didn't look at the board first. Too, I saw the walkie. I was like, oh, I'll grab the walkie, then I'll check out whatever this was. And yeah, and you get zombie back. comes well, out. Now I know what to do next time I play. It's yeah, but I don't think it way. matters, right? Either way, I don't think it matters. Yeah, you're gonna get bitten. I was gonna say that the game would have the same impact if you didn't get bitten. Right. <laughs> I've seen nothing about potential Lee in season two, so. <laughs> so yeah. So then episode maybe, maybe just pieces out at the end of it. Yeah. yeah. So actually, uh, I don't want to protect you no more, and just yeah, yeah we're done, girl. Like, oh. yeah. Um. Yeah, so basically the chapter ends with your choice for Lee, whether to hide his bite or tell the group. Uh, what did you guys do? Did you tell the group that you got bit? I hit it. You, keep... you hit it? I hit the bite, and then I went to look for Clem by myself. Yeah, I went by myself. I was like, check out this sick shit. Yeah, so I told the group. Uh, just because like, I, was, I was on the whole, like, I'm just going to be honest about everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, hoping because they know that there's a little bit of time, so I was like, I'll just yeah. tell the group. So I told the group. Um, and this is one of the notes where I actually made um notes about uh kind of like the, the 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 choices by the greater community. Yeah. Um, for the for the boy in the attic, uh, only twenty five percent of the people as Lee killed the boy in the attic. Seventy five percent of the people had Kenny do it. Which I thought was interesting, hmm. yeah. like why that choice was so significant, and then the um, Lee showing the bite. Eighty-two percent of people showed the bite, so most people showed the bite. Hmm. So I thought those were two just kind of interesting. Like it never works out when they get when someone hides it. Yeah, I find well, I figured find no matter out. what, things weren't going to work out. These, I'm like, you know what? Let's just hide the bite. Let's find Clem, and yeah, and yeah. we'll deal with it. I just didn't want to put everyone else at risk because then it, it tells you how many people you chose to go with you. Also, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, I had, I don't exactly know what I was trying to do. Like, 
my, my conversation. Choice, my choice of going alone was like the least. Yeah, chosen one. And I was just like I was. I didn't volunteer to go by myself, and I didn't want to. Like I was kind of being wishy washy about it, and I ended up having. Um, a couple people went with me. I'm trying to remember. Is Krista, Omid, Omid, and Kenny went with me? What did you guys have? Well, they they said they went by yeah, themselves. By oh, just by because well, I, I didn't know. I didn't know if they like forced go. themselves on you anyway. Like we stick no. together. No, you oh, can yeah. go by yourself. Yeah, I went. Okay. I went completely on my own. I really thought oh, you just because they're not me. So fuck them. My mom dying. <laughs> I'm dragging the whole group. <laughs> all right. Yeah, they all, I, I initially was like, yeah, I'll take off. And then they're like, but we should help you or something. And I was like, oh, well, whatever. Do what you want. Then. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I know I'm cool. Yeah, but well, I'm lit, bro. Yeah. And that moves us into uh, episode five. Lee, now injured, is having a conversation with a stranger about Clem's fate. The stranger says he's rescued uh, her from Lee. After some time, Lee manages to muster enough strength to gather the rest of the group to save Clem. And after one last moment of heroism, we embark on the end of the journey following Clementine along the way. So, episode five. uh, Initially starts out with a conversation with a stranger on the walkie-talkie. Um... Of course, Lee is very adamant that she's been kidnapped. The stranger on the walkie says he's rescued her. Because mm-hmm. uh, he's convinced that it was Vernon at first. So right. like, he runs to the hospital because the boat is also gone. Oh, they, they figure yeah. out the boat's gone afterwards. Yeah, yep. it's after that. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's after when they go back. So he thinks that Vernon's kidnapped uh, Clementine. Right. So he yep. goes yeah. to that where they they were holed up in that morgue. Yep. yep. He's there. And they're not there. Lee ends up passing out because he's starting to feel the effects. And then I know there's a few different ways this can play out, but it all plays out the same way. Um, so you're going to try to slow. Or five? What's that? Can he count to ten on his hands? Or five? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. <sighs> so you make and a choice. So showed it all. Yes. Uh, which Every is... single cut. Oh, it's just brutal. That's the, like, I will say the facial animations on Lee during that scene are like hard, as hard to watch as him actually doing the deed. The they, sound, really, they really put the anguish on his face. Yeah, yeah and the <laughs> sound yeah, and everything. Face, I could not oh. look away from the song. Oh, so, it's it, brutal. So you guys all saw the, the arm off? Yeah. I yeah. kept it. That's, that's the only... Oh, can you keep the arm? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you can keep yeah, the arm. The, the only change... Nope. Uh, yeah, the change going forward is uh, throughout the rest of the episode, Lee either looks more turned or he looks yeah, just he gets pretty, sickly. He gets more and more blue the whole uh, as as you go along. Um, yeah. By the end, he's looking real bad. Yeah. And uh, what's interesting here is if you brought people with you, you might not even get the choice. They can, Hold they'll just down. be like, we're cutting you off. We're cutting your arm off. Um no. So a couple different ways that play out, but eventually kind of same result. Um, I needed two hands for fighting. Yep. <laughs> uh, you end up going on top of the hospital. Stuff goes on there. Horde yeah, the shows tower, up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you're trying to escape, uh, you're jumping over um, like a gap between buildings and Ben ends up falling and there is a choice. Well, that's, that's after you go to the house, right? And you find out yeah. the boat's stolen. Yeah, the boat's uh, gone. Yes, yeah. you are correct. Yep. And, you're and then all... you guys start looking for Clem together. And you, you stuck you up in the up... attic. Yeah, oh, you're right. In the attic. Yep. Forgot Jason's favorite moment in the whole because series. All the zombies are coming after you. <laughs> yeah, you're up yeah. in the attic. Uh, you're trapped in the attic. Zombies are in the house. Find you out start... that there's <laughs> the, the, the hole in the wall leading to another connected yeah. building jason's the favorite moment shit. in the game this one yeah like oh yeah these buildings are pretty flush up against each other i was like are we in chicago 
This wall ain't Have shit. Have you been to Savannah, Chris? Yeah. There are 127,000 people there, okay? I looked it up. And their walls ain't shit. So just remember, <laughs> if you ever go there, don't even try to hang a well, painting. Then, Those walls ain't shit. So I, when, I, when that part was happening where they were like using the um, the coat rack to like bang the wall open, mm-hmm. I was like, somebody who designed this game definitely saw Prince of Darkness. <laughs> Because there's a scene that's right, that stolen right out of that movie. Ah. The whole scene is stolen right out of that movie. I was annoyed that they used the word corroded. I've never heard of like wood being corroded. Yeah. yeah I, would, I would have been like waterlogged or rotted. Or rotted. Yeah. Or, yeah. Corroded is metal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're it's knowledge so of walls ain't shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah. So then they, uh, yeah, they go back to. Get exactly where they oh no they 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 go into the other house mm-hmm. uh and, and then they're trying to jump jump to another building yep. and everyone and, gets across yeah, the zombie yeah. coitus going on in that bed yeah, yeah. The, oh yeah the dead couple that had killed themselves before yeah anything happened to them yep uh and this is where ben falls uh, he's on like a balcony and the bal- balcony collapses um what I th- Ben clumsily did something? Oh my yeah. gosh! I was thinking we'd at least get the option to like grab him. I figured he would like at least make it to the ledge and we could pull him up. He, but yeah, no, do one of those just... things where the co- the yeah the reticle is like mm. there and you have to do it. Yeah, yeah, but it's like nope, he just goes straight down. Yeah, he's like a le- he's like a brick, just boom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, he falls and. I, I mean, uh, why would you trust the balcony if even the walls ain't shit? Obviously, the balcony. <laughs> no, basically, what you're saying is Savannah ain't shit. Right? Yeah, <laughs> the structural so, integrity in the city ain't shit. Yeah. So, and so Ben Ben's down multiple floors. I don't know if there's a difference here. I uh, Kenny goes down to try to save him because that's a, like he's gonna finally be a good guy for once. I, I just with. said I wish he'd die like five minutes ago. So. I gotta save him. What? It's the most dumbass moment I think in this game, actually. Yeah, it where was, it's like it didn't make pull him sense. up. I also need this like, no, I gotta save him. You dumb. Right. It's literally <laughs> just shoot him and then escape with Lee. Like, there's no reason. Yeah, you let him let him drop in the bell tower. Mm-hmm. I don't want to save any. This is like don't... literally like five hours later. Right. He's like, no, we're gonna go down there and save him. Right. And you knew he had one bullet shoot. left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like just shoot Ben. And go because Ben was a goner. He was yeah. He had that. Yeah. Metal they didn't, they didn't know that he had that thing sticking at him. He was until probably he paralyzed, yep. if not like yeah, ruptured a, a severe like yeah. yeah. Or he was a goner. So, I don't yeah, want to say I was, anything I didn't else un- about it for someone who'd want to keep playing. Right, but I I get why why Kenny would want to stay because he was. I mean, he lost his wife and his son. Like yeah, I get but that. It was but almost like dumbass heroic moment. Like yeah. there's no way I'm surviving this. So I'm going to hang out with the guy that I blame for their deaths and was just mm-hmm. wishing would die five minutes ago. So I found it, well, as far as like all the heroic uh, moments and heartfelt things, it's like, Kenny's dumb. I mean, did we don't... Have, did you have that moment where you convinced Kenny to like put it aside? Yeah. Yes. I was like... To like, to, like set aside the whole thing with Ben? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got, there was like that point where like I snapped him out of like the whole like rage thing he was going into about it. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, but so we kinda, to me it kind of made sense that he would like be like, yeah. all right, fine. Yeah, because I pointed out like he lost his whole family and all his friends and all this shit too. It's like you're not the only one who lost people you yeah. love, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's kind of like, I've been a dick this whole time. Yeah, basically that's exactly yeah. Mm-hmm. And but, I, and... I will say we we don't know what happened because yeah, you don't Lee see ends it. Up, yeah, Lee ends up escaping. Yeah. Um. The horde closes in. We do hear a gunshot, and that's all we know. And they uh, ask you later on, like, "Did you see what happened?" You're like, and you have the choice of like saying, "Like, well, they can't, they can't. He couldn't have survived." Yeah, I see mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So then we're it's just Lee, uh, Krista, and Omid, Omid. Um. And then you're closing oh, also, in on the. You, sorry, uh, when you were in the attic, did you guys say you'd want? Um, him to be uh, Clementine to be with Omid and Carly. Or oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I did. 
I, I said, yeah, I told them to take Clementine if anything right. happened to me. Because yeah. at least we knew them. I didn't want them to be like, here, go find a random family and yeah. pass yeah. Clementine off because yeah. they could be cannibals. And Kenny's kind of on him. Yeah. yeah. Don't yep, bring yep. them bloody dairies. So, uh, yeah, then I don't. You're going across the rooftops. Yep. And, and there's. There was a conversation that you had over the walkie. Uh, somehow Clementine gets a hold of a walkie-talkie, and she tells tells you that she's at the hotel where her parents mm-hmm. were. Yep. I'm um, where my parents, so yeah. and that's all you hear. And then he goes, they're at the hotel. Mm-hmm. Yep, making her way across roofs, um, cross, crossing like a, I don't know what you call that, the sign. Like yeah, an it's kind of like an it's sign like that crossed over sign. the street. Yeah, yeah, like an archway kind of sign thing. I, I, had, the... I had I had I had uh, Kristen Olmead go first. Okay, what'd you guys do? I went I, first. I went first. Yeah. Nothing left to lose because I'm turning <laughs> blue. So I just went. So do so you, for, yeah. you go first? Do you make it all the way across? Nope. Well, yeah, you do, but it breaks. Yeah, because then yeah, they make it across and it breaks. Hmm. Okay. Then what? So either you, way, what, you get separated. Then what's Lee yep. do? Does he just slide climb down? down? Lee, Lee decides that he's got nothing to lose, so he climbs he climbs down the sign to the road, and then he uses the cleaver to just hack away yeah. through the zombies till he gets to the hotel. That was that was pretty stressful. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought that wasn't because it happened so fast. It's so I mean, it was cool. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's like it's happening so fast where it's like you have like a like maybe like a second and a half to like move that reticle to something to hit. Right, yep, but yeah. it seemed like there were so many options, and it didn't matter who you attacked. It's yeah, like as long as you were attacking somebody. Exactly. Right? So, like, I just, whatever the reticle was closest to, boom, I attacked that zombie. Yep. Yeah. And this is where they start to kind of show you that uh, he's at the point where now the zombies aren't necessarily interested in him because he's mm-hmm. yeah, that far in the process. But if he does get close enough, they'll still attack him. A little stanky. Um, so, yep, so then we make it. Uh, as we're making it to the the hotel, we make it our we, way downtown. We see a very familiar sight <laughs> sitting at outside of that hotel. It goes all the way back to chapter two, which I was like, the first time I saw that, I was like, oh my god! And that's yeah, where unless, I think unless like, they're just lazy with assets. Holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah well, so we wait, see wait, we wait, see the that? we see the station wagon that we found oh, abandoned yeah. uh, outside the hotel. Yep. I didn't check the license yeah. plate to know it was the same one, though. I'll yeah. say, yeah. I was like, is that the same one? But Yeah, I just remember going like, oh, station wagon. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> it made sense. Also, it, it hit me later mm-hmm. what, what it represented. So Yeah. Because also going uh, back a few minutes to when you're on the sign above, I was noticing how many of the same kind of zombies there were, mm-hmm. like, in different areas. So when uh, I saw that, that's exactly what I thought. Both that was an asset flip. I was like, was that just them using the same asset because they didn't want to make another car, or is that actually like a callback? Yeah, I didn't really like put it together until like a couple minutes later when you know things happen. Yeah. yeah. So what what happens in inside the hotel? So you go Pre- into the room, right, and then you see the door to the room is tied to the closet door, so like the person in the room can't get out, and you're trying to figure it out, and then that guy sneaks up behind you with a gun, tells you to empty your pockets. Did you guys empty everything? At first, I, did. I didn't. I did. <laughs> I, I put like, the. Dude's got a gun on me. It's like, here, this is all I got. It's not I much. Put, I put down. something down. I put one thing down, but I didn't put the cleaver down. I put down the radio. Like, he he kind of like puts the gun back yeah. in your head. He's like, come on, that, that yeah. can't be it. I put everything like, all right, down. Here you go. <laughs> and then and this is where. Here. Go ahead, Church. Uh, uh, this is and this is where like you're kind of judged on your 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 moral choices uh throughout the last few chapters as this guy like because he's been telling she's been telling she's been telling him yeah, your business all the deep dark secrets yo hey, yeah she was, she was just hoping to see her parents again so yeah. that's why i let yeah. carly die because she was airing out my business <laughs> you know, came to save you and you've been doing that shit too that was the biggest betrayal of the game girl and, yeah. yeah but uh church did you Empty all your pockets, or did I did. You... Yeah. Oh no, I kept that cleaver. And he's just like, "I ain't touching you." Okay, whatever. Just sit down. I was like, mm-hmm. "Nice." <laughs> <laughs> like it's cool. It's cool. 
Uh, yeah. So then, yeah, he kind of goes through like various, various choices that you made throughout the game and calls you out on your decisions. Um, and this is where it came back to bite me about uh, going back to to Danny because he's seen you do all this. He's been watching you the whole time, so like he, he uh, you know, he'll call you out about or he tells you what happened to his family uh, and why the car got abandoned, and that's a whole whole Lucky deal. Car, but, bro. Mm-hmm. but yeah, then he, he he basically just starts like saying like he's. He's going to take Clementine because he knows what's best for her. You're an awful person. And he goes through all these reasons why you're awful. And I mean, Well, yeah. They, so I, was I the only person that didn't take the stuff out of the car? I didn't either. Okay. Yeah, he goes, he even says something like, well, she told me, well, I, she told me that you didn't take him, but you were yeah. complicit because you were there. Yeah. And the rest of the people did take yeah. all the stuff still. And, yeah. he and, thinks, you didn't, and you didn't fight him on it. And he blame, he thinks, he blames because the wife left him. Because yeah. of the lack of supplies, and then her and the kid get killed. Yeah, uh, shortly so, thereafter, hey, she's still around. So, would you go? Would yeah. you guys say uh, <laughs> when he when he suggested he take her? I, oh. I was like, "Fuck out of here with your bowling ball!" Yeah, bike. absolutely yeah, not. Like, no. Yeah, I was like, "That's not <laughs> happening." <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't remember all the. There's a few, ch- like he called me out about Danny. Um, I can't remember what else. There was like a few things like he got me on. It's like, ah, I, I wish I didn't make those choices, but I, I don't, you know, think I made the wrong choice. I can't remember if he called me out on killing Duck and killing the kid upstairs. Yeah. But then you end up having the fight, a fight with the guy. Uh, Clem, again, being a badass. Yeah, well, we got, we got to say why he's distracted, though. Right, oh, a bowling ball. Bag yeah, that's at, right. That's right. His feet, and he's, he's having a conversation with his, He's having a conversation and, with yeah. his wife. You realize that his wife's head is in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why yeah, I he's alluded to when I told him to fuck off with his time. bowling ball wife. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's not fright night too, man. He's in a go bowling ball, bowling <laughs> What's with What's in the box? Yeah. What did you, what did you guys uh, get Clem to hit him with? The cleaver. Yeah. Yeah, she hit him with the cleaver. Oh, okay. Mine, I got to hit, hit him with the carafe because I still was packing the cleaver. Mm. And then I had to fight him a bunch because it really didn't matter that I had the cleaver, apparently. Yeah. So I still had to fight him a bunch. Clem shoots him, right? Is that what happened? Does Clem shoot oh, him? Oh, yeah. Was that what happened? I thought Clem shot him. She gets him with the cleaver. Yeah, that's in the shoulder. Yep, mm-hmm. and then you're you're struggling and fighting, and then yeah, I'm shoots him. Yeah, I think she picks up the gun. Oh. Yeah, because I uh, I straight choked him to death. Well, oh, that's walked, right. You like, have the option. I was like, check it out. And I was I was just like, oh, I don't want to see her kill. Like, I want to be kind of merciful. And then yeah. you stop, but then she shoots him. Yeah, I should yep, yep. I should have just dumped the bowling ball bag on him. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, she looks awesome at you after she shoots him in the head. She's like, "Yeah, weak." Yeah, yeah. What's <laughs> awesome is like when you're leaving, like you can look at the bowling bag and you realize that it's, yeah. the head is still animated. Yeah, like, yeah. It's still making noises and shit. It's like, yeah, I, I took a look at it on the way out. Now yeah. she's like, "What's in there?" And he's like, "You don't want to know." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then this leads to another crazy moment that kind of is a thing that Walking Dead it's kind of ran with and mm-hmm. the, the show is in the comic books that if you smear yourself with zombie goo, that kind of takes off a scent and the zombies will kind of leave you. And there's, that's pretty much the only way that they can both get out of this hotel and through this horde of zombies. And then there's the shock. I, yep. I, uh, I, I actually thought it was just because Lee was so far gone at first when he opens that door and the zombies just kind of like, what's up bro? Sniffing him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why I figured. But he had a I'm bunch like, of yeah, yeah killing of, all the zombies well, to get into right. a hotel. Right, yeah, he was, the blood blood on the covered in, he was covered in gore. Yeah, the corpse blood on the street yep. was uh, running red. But yeah, as you're <laughs> as you're going through the horde with Clem, uh, you see you see her parents, which was expected. I figured her parents were dead the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't want her to see them. That was what I when I yeah. was like, "Oh man," because <laughs> the look on her face when she realizes who they are, I was just like, yeah. "That's cool. That yeah. sucks." Yeah, <laughs> girl, you're dead ugly. 
Oops. <laughs> yep. And then, of course, as we're making our way through, Lee uh, essentially kind of succumbs to his, his sickness and passes out. Basically, as you see it, her parents, he's just like, don't yeah. let the... But... Yeah. So, yeah. What, what happens... What happens with the last bit of the game here? Well, you wake up and Clem had pulled you into this building and shut like the a, shutter. It's like a jewelry right? store or something? Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like a parking garage or something. Something. I jewelry store, I think. Security jewelry guard. Store, yeah. Um, and then you try to keep getting up and you can't. So then you're trying to get Clementine to leave, but the the keys are attached to a, like, looked like a security guard almost. Yeah, uh, in the other room, and she tries to get him, and the zombie comes after her. Right? Yep. Yeah. So then you have to try and get her to save herself, but you can't do anything. <laughs> so you're like trying to get the because your hands cut <clears throat> off, so you can't reach. What were you trying to reach? Oh, oh, my arm wasn't. I wasn't reaching. Oh yeah, you had an I arm. Tired. I was tired. Oh, the yeah, bat. Is... There was the bat that she broke there's the a... window with. Yep. Yeah, there's a bat. So you like kick it over to her. Kick it over to her, yep. Yeah. They get stuck, and then uh Lee has her grab cuffs because he knows what's going on. Cuffs uh cuffs him to the radiator, and then you get the the last significant choice of the game, or the biggest choice of the game, I would say. With his whether or not uh will she deal with Lee or leave him. Of course he wants her to to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I believe this was another one of those moments where I think it was like 95% yeah. of people mm-hmm. made the choice to, to take out Lee and yep. Holy crap. Like even the second time through, like I knew exactly what was going down. And it was like, God damn, that's, t- that's, that's heavy. That was hard. Here it is. Here it is. Well, that's, that's why I prepared her for it through the whole game of, Watch this shit. See, it ain't so bad. <laughs> yeah. See, so, yeah, I desensitized her to it. She still cried. I was like, have I taught you nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Lives ain't shit. Just like walls. Yep. Uh, so, you know, she does what needs to be done. Uh, depending on... Well, I, I think regardless of what you told her to do, find uh, Kristen Omid or go find a group or whatever... She ends up out in a field. Um, did you all get her, sits, her to shoot you? Yeah. You did? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, she ends up out in the field and she's sitting on a log and off in the distance, she sees two people walking. You can't see who they are. They're just walking. They, they stop. Kinda, they kind of turn toward her. They turn toward mm-hmm. her. And yeah. they see, she sees that they see her and then she like... It ends. Makes that look like yeah. like a scared look, and bam, that's it. Season one. Well, uh, season I got one. her to not not shoot Lee, so that oh. he's, you know I don't want to spoil anything, but he's the final boss at the end of the final <laughs> season. So, <laughs> so but uh, but actually, there is a callback all the way to where like they reference what you end up doing mm. in the in the final season. I think so. They like mm. someone asks her about it, and then she yeah. tells the story, and that's what. Yeah. We won't go into into detail with uh, four hundred days. Um, it, it kind of led nowhere if you if you stop here. Basically, it's yeah, nothing it, unless you continue. It, it's make a prelude. To yes, two. So 400 days essentially. Yeah, to set up for for season two, um, but 400 days uh, centered on a truck stop on a Georgia highway. This DLC episode uh, for C- season one of The Walking Dead by Telltale Games tells five linked stories of survival in the wake of the zombie apocalypse from day one of the undead plague to 400 days later. The Walking Dead 400 Days offers more of the horror and human drama of Robert Kirkman and Telltale's award-winning series. Echoes of the choices you made in season one will carry over into 400 days and the choices you make in 400 days will resonate into season two. So yeah, like Jason said, this is basically a setup for season two. Um, I don't remember a lot of big connections 
to season one in this. Um, besides the, the point, uh, well, Chris Chris wasn't able to finish 400 Days because it hard locked. Um, but you saw the the big connection with one of the characters, um, Russell. So basically, yeah, it's covers. Um, there's uh, Vince, Shell, Wyatt, Russell, and Bonnie. You play like a bunch of little shorts. They're probably like what, like 20 minutes each yeah. or so. Not even less. I felt like Vince's and Wyatt's were like five to ten minutes. Yeah, they're really short. Yeah. Um, and it's basically setting up these characters, how they all came together. Um random instances like through very various points um like vince starts off like right at the beginning of of the uh, apocalypse shells like 236 days in bonnie's 220 days in why it was 41 days in and russell's was 184 days in and then um through various circumstances they they deal go with what they go through eventually end up meeting up as a group. And then depending on how you played through each of their stories, which I'm not exactly sure how they lead to the final results. I think it's whether or not your characters were trusting uh, friendly, or if they're more like untrusting and uh, maybe um, uh, standoffish would decide whether or not um, at the end of chapter four, they come across a, uh, another survivor that's a, basically a scout for another community and she wants them to join. And depending on how you played through these people, either go with her or not, or a mixture. Um, so like I said, Chris wasn't able to finish it, unfortunately. Um, for me uh, in my end result was um Bonnie, Shell, Vince, and Becca went with. Um, uh, I can't remember the Tavia. I think it was Tavia. Name. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Bonnie, Shell, Vince, and Becca went with Tavia. Wyatt and Russell did not. What did you guys get for your? I had everybody go but Russell. Jason, I had I had everyone go, but was Bonnie the one that had the little sister or whatever? Or uh, no, no Shell. Shell, okay, she, she's the only one that didn't go with my group. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, I, I gotta say, real- I'm glad, I'm glad Foreign to Days pays off in season two because yeah. it's like a standalone thing. I th- I was like very disappointed that I played it. Like, yeah. I played it this morning. I'm like, that was kind of dumb. There was no point yeah. to any of that. So, yeah, yeah it, it makes sense if I play season two. Yeah. yeah. Other- <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, the only way, real way it ties into season one is. Uh, and Russell's story, if uh, Carly's the one that died on the side of the road, you jump off the road to kind of hide from a truck. And it's Carly's body on the side of the road there. And then when you're, that. When, you're yeah. at the, <laughs> when you're at the truck stop, um, and they're kind of one that, the one they have it fortified, mm-hmm. uh, Joyce from the cancer survivors group. In the oh, yes, basement. that's right. Yep. Uh, they're there, and she talks about how like their group fell apart after Vernon stole the boat, and mm-hmm. basically how much of a piece of shit he ended up really being. And mm-hmm. he seemed like a nice guy at first, and then just their whole group just like disbanded right after they stole the boat, pretty much. So yeah, and how like no one else was down with it. He just kind of was like only out to get the boat. So yeah, yeah. That's a really so that's... I know it's anyway. Yeah. So mo- that covers it mostly for for the story for season one. Um, we'll get some final thoughts here in a minute. Um, we briefly just touched on music, um, but I figured if he had any other further thoughts on the music of the game, I think it'd be worth mentioning. Um, of course, the main theme, that like sad song, comes throughout the series. The Dep- depression anthem. Yeah. yeah, the depression <laughs> anthem. I, got, I honestly got sick of hearing it after a while. <laughs> All right, well, it's just when you knew some out. real shit was about to be said. You're just like, oh, yeah. uh, I don't really re- remember the music being standout 
either like one way or the other like amazing or but that stuff yeah. that that song is the only one that really like stands out like oh something really yeah. sad is about to happen <laughs> Like and that that remains like a, a like a motif throughout the whole series. Like that is like the tragedy the, is the name the of the theme song. Game. Yeah. yeah. Like, Whoa. Don't, don't like any characters too much because they're probably gonna die. It's like Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Any other like, thoughts on music? Aside from that, I don't think it was very memorable. It fit the. Yeah. It never stood out as like, what are they doing with this music? So yeah. It, 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 it fit where it needed to. Yeah, it wasn't. We don't we don't have an Aliens Fire Team Elite weird ass out of place song in there at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, well, I would like to. I always like to get some more community involvement uh, to some extent with with the podcast. Uh, so we brought back the three word reviews uh, for this episode. Didn't get a lot of responses, but we got a couple of them. So that's always great and. I always encourage everybody who's following along, whether you're playing along with the games or not, that, you know, feel free to always share your thoughts because, you know, it's all just being part of the community. So um, we got a couple responses uh, from at Marcos Coda for his three word review. He said stressful, good narrative. And uh, at Chase Mad Gamer said very sad end. So I know I didn't prep you guys for coming up with a three-word review. So just coming up with something on the spot, what would be your three-word review? Depressing as fuck. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) Fair. Mine aren't so much as uh, words as... That's it. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Do I got an excuse? And, Use my gun. Yeah, and for me, like, am I? Am I? Uh, I'm. I have no qualms <laughs> about I, expressing my, my love for this game. So for me, it'd just be uh, like, uh, I love this. Must play masterpiece. Two. If I can aim it directly at Skybound, it would be fix that glitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. That, no so the 360 version. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have any issues in this game, and you know, like I said, I like I will I I I do want to give Skybound a lot of credit for what they did. Nope. Uh, they for much. for those who might not be familiar with um, the the whole like story of Telltale and just in general uh, the Walking Dead series, so Telltale kind of went to town after the success of the walking dead, they started making all kinds of games. They're making multiple, these styles of games. They did borderlands. They did Batman. They did uh, wolf among us guardians, of the galaxy game of Thrones, like a whole bunch of games. And I think one of the biggest, it well, really the only issue with these games, I think is them doing the episodic model where as all the games in, that telltale was doing they were releasing them episodically so it'd be one episode at a time but they would do like an episode and then every couple months you'd get the next episode until that whole season was done and then it might be like a year or two before the next season started and i think that's always detrimental uh, just in general um i think it was successful with the walking dead because it was it was new as fresh at the time uh and there's other other um studios at the time when the walking dead came out that a bunch of these different studios were like, Hey, we're going to do these episodic releases and none of it really panned out that well, because that's just not how people want to enjoy their video games. They want to just be able to play the game at their own pace. It keeps people dragging it out. I think, uh, also helps people lose interest. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of the issue, especially because they flooded the market with so many games. Um, but eventually as, we got to season four of The Walking Dead. Uh, Telltale was kind of losing the support that they had because they had all these different games, all episodic releases, and they ended up shutting. They ended up going under halfway through season four. Uh, thankfully, there was enough of an audience and fans for specifically The Walking Dead game series that uh, there was enough uh, outcry that Skybound, who is owned by Robert Kirkman, he's the creator of The Walking Dead. Um, They've they've only made a couple other. They made like Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, which is a VR game. They made um, uh, 
Overkill. I think Walking Dead Overkill. It was on, Onslaught. Onslaught. It was some other Walking Dead game, the not good one. It was a not good one. Maybe it was that one. I can't remember. Uh, But they hadn't done much other games, but they ended up getting the rights to Walking Dead. And at that point, like everything, all the assets and everything had been created. They just needed to put it all together to finish out season four. And they did. And kind of going into my final thoughts uh, on just the Walking Dead series in general is... If if you play season one, you enjoy season one. Absolutely, I highly encourage you to keep going because season one has that punch because uh, it is like that's your introduction. It's fresh. It really gets you connected to Lee and Clementine. But the rest of the series is like almost on that level. The only only thing I would knock is that you know they don't get that 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 first introduction that that season one gets. But it is fantastic the 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 story continues so you'll continue on as clementine they throw a couple other curve balls throughout the story but it's one just overarching narrative and it's really surprising how choices that you made in season one will carry on through the whole rest of the series and yeah if you enjoy season one just definitely continue on to the rest of the series if you get a chance and the definitive edition is a great way to do that. Hopefully there's less bugs <laughs> in the rest of them. I don't know. Uh, Cause I'd like, I'd bought all the seasons individually myself, um, you know, years ago. So I didn't really run into any of those issues. So hopefully it's not as much of an issue in the later seasons. Bugs get better. I don't know, but um, yeah. So what are your guys's uh, final thoughts on season one? Or The Walking Dead in general. Yeah, I I loved it. Um, I was kind of skeptical at first because it's kind of slower paced and stuff. And like I said earlier in the in the podcast, I prefer gameplay over anything else. But the story is so good that it just brings you into it, and you just want to keep playing. And it was funny after I beat the game, I posted my Discord, and we were talking about it. And there was somebody who's like, I I can't get into those style games. And so I'm like, I, I just told him, like, give it a shot. Like, the story is so good, you might enjoy it. Did you say, yeah, I, I can't get into friendship with you then? That's what I would say. <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think it's, uh, like I mentioned that towards the beginning of the podcast, that I think there's kind of a misconception on, like, how interactive these games are, where people really think that it's just, you're just clicking a button like it's a visual novel or something Mm -hmm. and i don't want to knock visual novels because i haven't played a lot but the couple that i have played ended up being really good but those are very much more just like you know it's a lot of reading where this is interactive you are walking around you're interacting with things it's it's light the gameplay is light for sure but there's it's a little bit more involved than p than some people would give it credit right and i think he actually used the words visual novel and it's like well Mm -hmm. it's it's not that it's definitely different yeah, like, like I said, best my best comparison is it's essentially a point and click adventure game. Uh, maybe with a little bit more involvement with than some of the point and click uh, games of, of the past. Uh, with like the very quick light puzzle, times. very light puzzle yeah. solving. Yeah, yeah. Unless you can't see the damn window to crawl through, that's yes. no, that's not very <laughs> light. Ten out of ten <laughs> challenge. Yeah. Maybe you should change your name to Captain Obvious. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't oh, obvious oh. though. <laughs> uh Chris, what what are your final thoughts? Uh going into it, I knew what I was getting into because I had already played Back to the Future, hmm. the game that they did. So I knew how it worked. Uh I was assuming it was gonna be more like the T V show, which I would I've said I was not a fan of. Uh but I was glad that it was more taking after what the comic book was like, which I like more. But yeah, the story is just like the first episode. Yeah. It's kind of slow and it takes a little while to get into it and all that. But once like you start developing like Lee, when it starts telling you like, Oh, you need to talk to the people and tell them that you're, you killed somebody, that kind of stuff. And like, you're developing the way Lee's going to interact with everybody else from that point on. I was like, this is actually really grabbing me. Like I I really like I like the characters, even though when they're being complete tools, sometimes but uh yeah like the story was great it was written really well the characters are well developed 
Uh, it's like a, like in a horror movie. Like if if I'm just watching people get killed that have no character that I, I have no feelings for, then there's no point really. Mm. So they're basically but, just so there like, as meat. They, yeah, they're just they're just there to get killed, and that's all. The only reason they're the only purpose they serve is just to to be a, a walking blood bag, you know. But like when you give a shit about a character and then they get off, you know, that it's it, it hits you, you know, yeah. in the feels. And that's what this game did. It kept on hitting me in the damn feels, and not a lot of games do that. I say that a lot on my channel too. Is like I, it takes a lot for me to get emotionally involved in a game that I'm playing. Mm, it doesn't yeah. happen very often, and this is definitely one of them. And I was actually kind of bummed out that I couldn't finish 400 days because I knew that eventually it was going to play into what comes after this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like, I, I got so ticked off at the game last night. I just told Jason, I was like, fuck it. I just deleted the damn thing. I was so mad. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I really do want to go forward with it. And I would definitely tell people that if it's not a visual novel. It's nothing like that. Like you said, it's like a more of a point and click adventure game and uh, give it a chance. And you'll definitely be surprised like I was. Uh, like Back in the Future, I liked it. Didn't grab me the way this one did, though. Hmm. So, cool. Yeah, the writing was definitely top notch on this. Uh, Jason, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a cut. I, back of the back of the box <laughs> quote. Yeah. yeah, like excellent, excellent game. But, like I, I, I'm with Church on this 100. percent If you like this, definitely continue with it, and definitely check out their other games like the batman yeah. series is the biggest tragedy i think of telltale shutting down as it was really going somewhere the first two seasons are amazing and then it just i'm hoping at some point they can start that back up i would that'd be very very awesome but uh you can't really go wrong with their type of games but i don't know like they're generally not that kind of game that i would like but they telltale was so good at it that i see why they kind of just milk that cow with different franchises without switching it up a lot it's kind of like the lego games lego games just be the lego games in every game no matter what franchise it is so uh it works for them kind of sucks but like you said the episodic thing kind of sucked especially for guys like us who are physical game collectors a lot of the time i just would wait till the season was out on disc even though you know the same thing i do with when a show is is on a lot of the time I would just wait till the season was over and then just marathon it real quick. I just can't seem to do that with Disney plus shows. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got sucked <laughs> into watching those week to week, probably because people would spoil it. So yeah, that's about the only show I do that with. But when it came to like the walking dead show, I'd be like, don't even talk to me about it. I wait till the season's over. Like, how can you do that? It's like, cause I didn't start easy the season. <laughs> I didn't start the season. So I'm not hooked right now. I just wait. Yeah. Um yeah, but one of the one of the best story driven games that I've played probably ever. Uh, there's only a few games that really uh get my feels and this one definitely does that. So yeah, that's something that they were they were really good at. They were storytelling masters. But uh Yeah. Yeah, it it's probably my favorite in, uh, like uh, version of The Walking Dead, like the show, like I said lost me. The comics are great, but this is like it's almost like you're like the character in the comics. Mm-hmm. I always, when I'm like, you love movies and stuff, but you think video games are dumb. It's like you, it's like you're in that movie, man. Uh, the, that's something I always tell people. It's like that the video game is always like at least worth checking out, you know, maybe not back in the day, but mm-hmm. like now that they can like really draw you in with the story, it's like, it's better than the movie. Cause it's like, you're in the movie, man. You control the movie. And then when everyone, someone tries to rag on me for still playing video games, I'm like, that's exactly why I do it. Sometimes I like mindless fun, but sometimes I'm yeah. like, yeah, it keeps my attention more than a movie. So yeah. If you like a good story, check it out. If you want, all out zombie mayhem. This might not be for you. Like I basically, my closing thoughts were my opening thoughts when I suggest <laughs> this game to people. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so then, as we kind of wrap things up here, I want to let uh, listeners know what the upcoming games of the month are for the next few months. So for November, uh, Cartridge Club is playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City. 
Uh, so definitely recommend checking that game out if you've never played it. I would imagine most people have played. I think that was like a lot of people's intro to GTA. Yeah, it was mine. Still my favorite. Three. Chris, have you never played any GTA? I've played three. Okay. Oh, you gotta play Vice City. I've never played Vice City. So good. I've or play them. five. If you have not gonna play I've anything. Five. I played five. Uh, I tried I've playing all great into it. I played yeah, I played them all. Except top four, down ones, sure. top down ones can fuck completely off. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. I have, I played, the, I have played, played the original and yes, I agree with Jason one hundred and ten percent. F it those depends, games in the A. It depends <laughs> where we're gonna, we're gonna see this guy in like a week. Maybe we should like he looks pretty angry and I mean we should uh, <laughs> Yeah. No, so so the <laughs> thing with the original GTA one and two is like if you didn't play those games when they I played GTA when that was it. That was the only option. Oh, yeah. It was I did really too. I cool. Bought, I bought the original when it came out. So did I. Uh, and I anyways, had the, I had the British expansion, and it sucked. Out yeah, too. I could not stand it. I, I love those yeah. games. Anyways, uh, so then December is Mortal Kombat. Uh, I believe it's the original Mortal Kombat, but it might be the trilogy. So, <laughs> if, he, if, if the Cartridge Club does not bring Chris back for that episode, I'm not listening. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I'm, I'm should... making a stand. I'm I'll be playing stand. my arcade one up in the other room while we're recording that bitch. Yeah. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> and for since this is a audio only deal, in the background, Chris has a big Mortal Kombat standee behind him. Yeah, and uh, he likes Mortal Kombat and, uh, just wall, a bit. and the arcade like wall marquee. Uh, marquee. Yeah, arcade marquee. Yeah, and I got the one up in the other room. <laughs> and uh, you can't you can't see it, but the big Mortal Kombat two uh banner that I got from the video store that I worked at when Mortal Kombat 2 came out on the home console. <laughs> Even as a Shiva waifu pillow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you said then... you wouldn't say hell! <laughs> uh, so then, uh, announcing Cartridge Club's game of the month for January episode 5 is Fantasy Star, uh, one of the longest, first and longest running JRPG series for consoles. So, yeah, we always gotta get that, um, gotta get those retro games in there. Do it. I get that Genesis, some Genesis love because it doesn't always get get the coverage it deserves. All right, so yeah, Uh, so that will do it for this episode of the Cartridge Club Game of the Month podcast. Again, if you'd like to get involved with the club, I'd encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Cartridge Club NA. You can also visit our Discord, which has a lot of discussions, um, including this month's Telltale's Walking Dead season one, and there's also the Cartridge Club forums at Cartridge Club. Dot org. Uh, to those who are of you are interested in supporting the club beyond a review of the podcast on your app of your choice, I'd like to mention the club is entirely funded by pledges made by members of our community. We're extremely grateful to, to those supporters, and if you are interested in becoming one of them, please look into how you can at patreon.com slash cartridge club. So as we're uh, wrapping up here, I want you all to be able to tell people where they can find you on wherever they can find you. So, uh, Jason, where can people find you? You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Corpse Slave Gaming. And, uh, yeah, you can hear me on Once in a While on the Game Tenants podcast with you, Church. And on my own channel, there's a podcast with Chris and myself called Super Enabler Bros. And uh, we've had both you guys on as guests, so... Check it out. It's always a fun time. Cool hangout. We do backlog roulette where we pull up, you know, you say you got to get the retro going. That's how we do it. You, gotta, you can't, it's hard enough to keep up with current gen stuff. So, you know, sometimes you got to crack in the stuff that you're buying and like actually play it. So that's how I, I uh, devise that as a plan to keep me playing the old stuff I'm picking up, not just the newest releases. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Chris, um, on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, I am the old ass retro gamer. On Twitter, it's O A Retro Gamer because apparently they don't like ass. Um, I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm on the Super Enabler Brothers heard. podcast with uh, Corpse Flood here, and I also am on a podcast called uh, Shh, The Movie Is Starting. Uh, that you can find on all podcast download sites. Movie commentary track podcast. 
Excellent. And Captain Algebra. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all Captain Algebra. Um, on YouTube, um, I am taking a little break from streaming, but I typically stream twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesdays, taking requests or just playing random games I want to play. And then Fridays, we're going through my Genesis collection A to Z, and I'm playing every single game because I'm currently going for a complete Genesis collection. So at some point, I will play every single Genesis game on stream. It'll just take quite a few years. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I make edited contact here and there. So. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and then me, I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can look up The Game Grinder, and you'll find me, and then... It's bet and bet. There's no E in grinder. (laughs) (laughs) No, sometimes. There actually is. There actually is, bud. (laughs) Yeah, look me up. And then, of course, um, you can find me uh, periodically hosting episodes of the Cartridge Club. I'd recommend listening to all episodes of the Cartridge Club, but you can check out some of my previous episodes as well. Um, Yeah, like the Actraiser one. Let's not forget this episode is dedicated to the memory of Larry. Rest in power, Larry. <laughs> I wish I had another salt block to hit him with. Yeah. <laughs> Lick this salt. <laughs> yeah, so then, of course, I thank you guys very much for joining for this podcast. And for all those listeners, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you for joining us. CC Unite. The air is thin So we'll find a mountain path On down the hill Meet me where the snow melt blows It is there, my dear Where we'll begin again Skip and stop Yeah.